Welcome back to Numbers on the Board. Numbers on the Board! Yes! Be sure to leave a like on the episode. Subscribe to the channel if you are new around here. Your two times a week NBA fix. We doing it. And today we're talking about almost all 30 NBA teams. We'll get into that a little bit later. How are we feeling today? I'm feeling pretty good, you know. I'm I'm really rocking this hoodie. Like, I think you really put that shit on today. Shout out to my friends over at Fear of God. Shout out to my homie, Joakim Noah, for putting the brother on and, and making it easier for your boy to get his. Mike got on a vintage Christmas sweater. Like a Christmas sweater. I, I wanted to do that. I actually wanted to get a bunch of Christmas sweaters. I just haven't went out and bought like it. Like actual yet. Christmas sweaters or like memeable ones? Because I had like both. a Lionel Messi one. I, I wanted both. I wanted like some ugly Christmas sweaters. It's not too late. It's only February. Yeah, I, was I mean, say, yeah. December 10th. You said February. I did say February. <laughs> I'm living in the future, baby. <laughs> I've, been, I've been really feeling the holidays, so you should get them Christmas Are you in a sweater. Christmas period? You in a jolly It's period? hard to get in the feeling of the holidays. I ain't complaining, but it's been 50 degrees. That was only one yeah. day. That was been twice. Yeah. Twice. It was two days. Oh. The whole weekend. And then now it's near 40s too, so. I feel that. Did you thrift that? We did that get a little one? snow. No, I bought this. Okay. When? Weeks ago? Was that week? Last no, a couple week? nights ago, we got like bare minimum where it was just barely sticking. But then I remember one night my girl was at your place and then it was like a snow quail. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. And it was like white out. It was like crazy. Without I had, context, that's so crazy. My girl was at your house. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you say that I had, every episode. I didn't even know what a snow quarrel was. And I had got the notification like, what the hell is a snow quarrel? I had to look it up. Is that a snow tornado? It's pretty much like a, a blizzard. That's, it's just not as heavy of the snow. Mm. High winds, yes, low snow. We had too. some winds that was like maybe a week ago that was insanely crazy. I slept so yeah. good that night. I remember that sleep. I value I was that trying. sleep. Bro, the I remember the dog kept barking. Sleeping? Yes. I was in a parking lot, and there was a car flying. I saved somebody's car a that cart. day. A cart. Oh, I think you said a car was I thought you said no, 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 no. <laughs> that a little car ass was car. Like <laughs> flying. It was. It was in a parking lot. It was about to hit a, like a car, and I saved it. And like Look nobody ain't really seen it, but it was a good deed. You know. So what you saying? had to tell people at home. Yeah. That he'll do that because you, you you normally the guy that won't put the car back. Yeah, I, I haven't been putting the car back. I don't put, be putting the Why car Why would back. you admit to something like that? Well, are you serious? You just That's the third worst thing a human could ever do. Yeah, nah, nah there do be some stories that? that don't have. Okay, that, to that take it to the store, it. take it back. Trader Joe's don't have yeah. those I, things, but you take, I'm, I'm sorry. They do have the stores. Center. They yeah. do have the stores. Or, I mean, they do have the car corrals. For What's Trader preventing Joe's? you from going and bringing that car back? Laziness. Okay. And you're just okay with that? So you could have been, you left that car there. Hypothetically, it could have been a norm, a, a really windy day. You could have messed somebody's car up, like you it saved somebody. It wasn't a windy day, though. That's why I did. But that. what if it? What if the wind picked up that day? You later, win. later. That somebody, yeah. Hey, 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 do let's get one thing it. understood. It don't have to be the windiest day in in America to push a cart. You a cart don't have to move to fuck up somebody's car either. I, I understand that. Yeah. Right, so, but let me also put it in perspective. I'm not. I'm not putting any... it in between two cars. I'm putting it no, in no, a no, spot no. where it can't move anywhere. When, that no, does, that that's, does, that's no. still making the job harder for the people who has to go get the car. Yeah, and like I said, a cart don't have to be moving to mess somebody's car up. Where I are you putting it? Let's just be better. Go. How about that? I don't get Make a vow right now to return go. every cart that you pick You're up. You're the worst type of person. Why, you can't, what, why can't you do it, though? What do you mean? I'm not going to vow make that promise. I'm probably break that promise at some point. That's nuts. <laughs> I'm not going to make a promise. There has I'm not never been a time in my life where I've left a cart. No. Same. Unattended. Same. Hey, I used to take in carts. I know how it be. That's so you have, crazy. you have no empathy for the people that had to do it? No sympathy? I mean, when I was hey, when I was taking the cars, I honestly didn't care. That when you out the store, that's time that you don't got to deal with nothing. Were you doing I'll it walk when it over there and get that damn car. I mean, I'm no, not okay, leaving no, no. car There's out there. There's someone probably watching with. this video who probably jobs to do that, and they pissed off at people like you. It ain't, I've it ain't my job, job and I'm pissed I'm off. Okay. <laughs> because the, the reason it pisses me off is because it's like, number one, I'm a big believer in how you do anything is how you do everything. But then number two, it's like, and this ain't really got shit to do with Mike. I don't want to over dramatic it, but why? Why are Americans like that? <laughs> it don't. It take what thirty seconds to put the yeah. It will add an thing? extra minute. It ain't to your like commute. you going back into the store. I, I probably do. You about, got a call for help at the office. No, I probably do about ten percent of the car and time. putting it right there. Yeah, right there. You take a seven extra steps. That's why I like this podcast. Every episode, I feel like I learn something new. <laughs> I don't that, We need to stop I don't need to learn shit like that <laughs> I judge people I'm actually surprised I, I you admit it to I don't lie I mean, be like, I don't judge No I'm, I judge shit like that Cause again It takes no effort It's no effort If you don't do that I, Do you wipe your ass every time? 
<laughs> because people like when you that lazy, I question everything. That's a crazy <laughs> amount of, of laziness where you won't put instead of putting the cart there, I'm gonna just leave it here. It's like, damn. <laughs> I don't think I've ever moved my cart and it took more than 40 seconds. No. <laughs> uh, but in your question, do. I'm feeling I, good. I I'm feeling, I'm feeling as good as BYU. What did you just say over there? I said I gotta get back on that game. Yeah, no. Let's keep you away <laughs> from that game. That's an addiction. Then wasn't there a point. video of somebody asking that guy's dad if he's going to BYU and he said no chance? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure I saw that video. Um, and here he is, committing to BYU. Um, that guy is crazy, by the way. I don't know how to pronounce his last name yet. Then just say AJ. Oh, AJ. My fault, <laughs> AJ. I say the Bansa. The Bansa. But he's going to BYU. Um, Which... I'll just let yeah, it know. Yeah, here's the video. It's not the biggest surprise to me. I, whenever you have a BYU in the final like that, I'm just a believer that you're going to go. Because why else? You know, like, what else is he doing? The only time that happened was when Jabari had it. I was for sure thought Jabari was going to BYU, and he was like, no, nah, I'm going to Duke. And I was like, wow. Okay. But, yeah, shout out to BYU, man. It's a good day for them. Let's drop the mic. Holiday season. Based off this year, we're going to remake the commercial where they do the jingle. Like, they make the little jingle song. From the three-point line, you know how they always do. We got to remake the roster, but based off this year. How like many that. people was in it to Think. begin with? Derrick Rose, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, LeBron James. James Harden. James Harden. That's five. Wasn't Kobe in it? I'm not sure. Dwight dunked it right at the end. No, LeBron, no, LeBron came it. in LeBron with LeBron did dunk it. Uh, was Dwayne Wade in it? I'm going to look it up It right feels like Kobe work. has to be in it, right? But at I the think same Kobe time, was in that. There was one, two, three, four, five players. So and then Derrick Rose, KD, Steph Curry, James Harden, and Steve Nash. Steve Nash. Why do I not that? remember Steve so Nash being in LeBron this? Dunks at the LeBron end. dunks at yeah. the end. So Steve Kobe Nash in that. a Lakers jersey. I know I didn't remember <laughs> Kobe being in that commercial, but it felt like he had to be. But I, I yeah, man, yeah. I guess it has to be. We remember the Lakers jersey, and it was Steve Nash. <laughs> Maybe Kobe couldn't make it, so they needed an LA representative. <laughs> it was Steve Nash. It was Steve Nash. Is that the um, the year that they was on the cover of that magazine? This Him is going to be fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then they were awful. Maybe Kobe was hurt. And I don't he couldn't know. do it. But maybe Kobe couldn't hit his shot on cue. Nah. <laughs> That's why they had D Rose shoot first, though. There was Damn. no pressure. That's <laughs> Make crazy. the first one. That's when we start taping, Derek. I think, so, think D-Rose has to be John Morant. Oh, so you're going player for player. I was just thinking the best, like, who deserves to be in it. I would say Jason Tatum. I would say deserves to be I'm going to ask this question. Steph Curry stakes. Are we going to have it? Do, oh, so American players are making it. Because out of the gate, you're going to have mm. Jokic, Giannis, Luke, <laughs> <laughs> Wimby. That's a good question. <laughs> I mean, obviously, the game has shifted so much. Where I, At that time, there were, of course, some European players, but they weren't top of the league. Right. Yeah. We might get one. So choose wisely. Do you want it to be Steph, Tatum, or Ant, or Ja, or LeBron? Because, I mean. Let's still have Bron Duncan. I think that would be funny for the audience to have a 40-year-old be You got to grab Duncan. his back when he does. Yeah. <laughs> Bron, Bron is Duncan. Yeah. I kind of like the Ja Morant. Because we got to think about the appeal to the general yep. audience. Ja Morant definitely has that. Or Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards, with, without, a, one without a doubt. So, Steph Curry, we're, he's, he's, staying, locked. he's staying in there? Him and LeBron are locks to stay there. Okay. Are we putting Luca in there? I'm Is sure Luca celebrates Nash? Christmas. I'm Tatum gonna, is in there, in my opinion. Tatum's in I there. think Tatum should be in there. Yeah. Tatum's um, interested in there. What about Shea? If you're putting LeBron and Kevin, I mean, uh, Steph in there, you probably Kevin have Durant to put Kevin, Kevin Durant. 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 Yeah. So that really leaves us with two spots for new people. <laughs> like the damn All-Star game. Anthony it's just Edwards, spots that are already locked Anthony up. Anthony Edwards got to get one of those spots. Just I'm not mad at it. And then, yeah, you probably have to give it to a Tatum. Yep. So we just took out all of the European players after just asking would we have any American yeah. players. Uh, my dad asked me that question yesterday. Like, it, could could the Americans be the team of overseas players? And my answer was no. They would get their ass crushed. I think if you made it an all-star, it would be actually fun. The reason we win in the Olympics because they it's scattered. But if you just put a team of Wimby, Jokic, Shea, Luka, you know what I mean, Vic. The car Anthony Towns represent the world? Does he represent USA? That's a good question. That's a good question. I don't this know. Joel Embiid, is he still yeah, Joel. <laughs> his dual citizenship? Well, we're talking all-star. He's not there anymore. Uh, I, I was talking team for team. Oh, okay. Because could you have a Euro all-star team? I th You just named about six, seven guys, it felt like. Just add Evan Fournier at the end just to make sure they oh, get no, enough Franz people. Oh, Wagner would make it? Yes. Yeah. So there's like a seven or eight. Bogdanovich, you know he going to play. 
That's it. That's no longer an all star. That's my point. If you're going by KD way, that's not an all star. That would be hilarious to see his like resume at the end of his career and it says one time all star just because they needed a body. <laughs> so one time all star. Oh. I think I think you could field an actual team though. I think you could. I mean, you would have to have like a guy like Carlton Town saying, I want to represent the world, right? Mm-hmm. Some of those fringe guys. Um, but you could. Because I'm looking, I'm looking at it right now. Of course, you got Giannis. Let's say Car Anthony Towns does go. Pascal Siakam is mm-hmm. an all-star caliber player. He's Vucevic is playing up. like an all- They're all going to be bigs, though. That's the yeah. problem. They don't have mm-hmm. a ton the of guard, guard play all-star. other than Luka and Shea. Yeah, Luka. Guard one is <laughs> he just got to do what he do. Yeah. yeah. But Luka, damn, he carries that. Luka and Shea carry that shit significantly. Sure. <laughs> I think, man, that's really all you need. I'm looking at them from a wing perspective. Because mm. yeah, the wings, they go, it go guard big, guard big. But who is like their... Dylan Brooks. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but Dylan Brooks put on a a uniform that's not an NBA one. He turned into that man. He Buddy do. Healed. Oh yeah, Buddy Healed. Yeah, he is one of them. RJ Barrett. RJ RJ oh, Barrett's kind of nice. RJ Barrett. There you yeah, go. That's so like, RJ Barrett. Yeah, yeah correct you. Like, no, he said RJ. My fault. My fault. My fault. Um, it is mostly point guards and centers, though. That's that's the whole European way. Um, that's actually hilarious. That yeah. there, there's a gap in the wings position. Mister Finesse them all. Larry Markin. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He could play the three. Yeah, yeah. Larry like, ran off yeah. with an absolute bag. He hasn't done anything this season. Yes. <laughs> but it's like he is guaranteed that's 200 the, amps, baby. That's the dream, man. Yeah, For it really he, is. That contract year. Yeah. He knew what he had to do. Yeah. He was – give him credit. He was no, he, he was on his – but, but he, he – It was like a year and a half, yeah. two-year stretch. Yeah. But so far this year, it's been bad. Like, I watched part of their game the other night where they lost by 42. Was that the Grizzlies? No, the Kings. Yes, the Kings. The Kings, right. Um, no, no, I watched the game against them in the Grizzlies, so maybe that was a little bit before that. And yeah, Larry Martin they just, was just played the Kings. doing cardio. And that the, <laughs> the, the Jazz game is where Mike Brown said possession after possession after possession after possession after possession. I thought that was on a loop. After possession, Me too. After possession. I, KB put that in the chat. I watched it, and he did it like 12 times. And I'm like, wait, is this a loop? ended up with saying, y'all get what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> and that's when I was like, Hold on, this was real this whole time? Yeah. <laughs> Once I seen it was Sack <laughs> Film Room, I was like, oh, no, this is not a loop. Shout out to Sack yeah. Film Room. They ain't playing that. Like, they ain't going to loop that. Oh, man. Uh-oh. And it's crazy. He came to the podium. 26 times. And did that to just. I, uh, is, that seems like something he did in a practice or like a meeting with the players as well. Like he sat there and he did that and said that to them. It's, at the same time, so he just repeated it to us. I bet the people in the audience are like, is this dude having a stroke right now? What the hell is happening? You just keep repeating the same word over and over and I ain't going to laugh though while I got annoyed. <laughs> I, I watched the whole too. thing. I did too. I, I, I got annoyed. Multiple it. times, it's crazy. I got annoyed because I thought it was on a loop and I was I, w- I wanted to edit the video to actually give it a loop <laughs> and let it be 10 minutes long, but I was like, is that a good use of my time? Like, just I'm glad you decided not to. Me too, Mike. But I feel like that would be a funny tweet. That's it all. probably would. That's why he need a little bit of you. He need a little bit of laziness in that. that <laughs> Lead a card in the street. Uh, we got rumor mills for the first time this season, I believe, right? We do, except for when P did it with Cap and No Cap. Mm. Um, you let him take your segment. That's crazy. But the first one we got, this came out actually. Don't leave a segment we... around me, true player, for real. Ask my, <laughs> for real. <laughs> this is the biggest set of news. It came out literally right before we started. Uh, the Miami Heat are listening to the office right now. No, currently. this came out when I woke up. Which was right before we started filming. <laughs> <laughs> He's sleeping in the, in the studio. Up, right. Instead of just saying that he ain't know what he was talking about, he just saying some dumb shit. But we I do need up, to do like a little sleepover here. I, I'm a grown it. Wait, <laughs> I know where we can have a sleepover at. A content <laughs> sleepover. Just stream the whole thing 24 hours. Oh, you talking about that stream? house? The Bob house. You crazy. <laughs> you crazy. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, I woke up and I saw the notification and bro, I thought Jimmy Butler got traded. It started off like Sham Sharani. Yeah, it was like yeah. Miami Heat, Jimmy Butler. Uh, yeah, they're listening offers for him. They're listening and uh, teams that uh, they think will be interested are the Houston Rockets, the Dallas Mavericks, just because he's homegrown and he would prefer to go there. Um, so and are the they Warriors. saying those are teams that would be interested or teams that Jimmy Butler likes? I thought Butler, no, Butler is open to plan for these teams: okay. Dallas, That's Houston, and Golden State. Cool. Uh, Golden State, I don't really think that's going to happen. Just I think they have the highest likelihood of all of those teams, though. I do, do want to say but some Miami Heat fans owe me some apologies because I said last year the writing was getting on the wall and they were saying, man, you're just hating on the Heat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, where you at? That's the funny part. they actually been looking good for the past like week. Where you yeah. at? Yeah. Shout out oh. to Tyler Hero. Hey, I mean, that's, that's when you got to start selling, right? 
Yeah, yeah, you're right. But because they good is what twelve and ten now. I mean, yeah, I, that, that, I was that, thinking about that for a lot good. of teams. It's just like when you start rolling, that rolling might not even really be like go, getting you somewhere. So, like, what do you do at that point? Do you sell high? Or do you kind of just buy in and say, well, like... they're a high player. They're a high player. It's Tyler Hero. It's not Jimmy Butler. Yeah, it's, Tyler Hero's the all-star on the team right now. <laughs> so, like, what are you selling high on? There's, you're not selling Tyler Hero. Because, like, if, that would be my thing. If they, were, if, if they were shopping Tyler Hero, then it would be like, oh, they're selling high on him. But they're shopping Jimmy Butler. Well, right? I don't know if they're going to shop they're Tyler Hero. They're kind of selling low for Jimmy because he's put together, what, three, four good games in yeah. a row. And it's like, okay, now it's time. But it ain't like... This ain't the Jimmy Butler we've seen even last year. Um, no. I, but Either maybe way. some teams may say Jimmy might come here and be rejuvenated. That could be like their only hope and their only. Is that like, a good way to look at it, though? Yeah, I mean, maybe depending if you're the Warriors, who are good, but maybe they do need that one more piece to get them over the hump to where they want to be to capitalize on Steph Curry's window. Yes, I could see them having that type of mindset. But the Dallas Mavericks, I don't. I don't see why they would. I don't get even know how you get there. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna look at the the salaries, but I don't know Max how you make. It feels like you have to give up too much. Like, and what Maxie's at like fifteen to twenty, right? No, no or is no, he 11, lower than that? Twelve. Oh. Yeah, he's gonna be. A, you gonna have to give up a lot to get up to 20? that fifty m. That would have been. Hey, Clay Thompson, thank you for signing here. No, 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 moving. no, don't give up Clay. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So, like, I don't even know how they would get there. And again, this is reportedly these are the teams Jimmy Butler wants. That the, the Mavs could be like, what the? F- we don't want you at all, and they yeah. probably don't. And I think the Miami Heat are gonna have. You think Pat Riley is doing anybody favors with the way that this team look? He's trying to get better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it would have to be Clay, PJ, Gafford, and Maxi. That's. Not- most of your rotation of players. <laughs> you don't do that trade if you're yeah. the Dallas Mavericks. You bought in Clay to help with your shooting, and then you trade his ass for Jimmy Butler? Yeah. And then what were the other teams? Houston? Houston, yeah. Houston obviously has some Steven stuff Adams. to make it happen. Steven Adams. Um, shit. I, Jeff how much Green, you, right? I, yeah, how that's 20 million Green? right there. But how, how much How much do you value Dylan Brooks? Because mm-hmm. those two make give you 20 yeah. million. And if you add his 20 million, that's like 42 right there. Yep. Well, in my 2K series, that was the team that I traded Jimmy Butler to. That makes sense. Well, I feel like they have the stuff for him. It's just if they want to buy in. And him. I hope they don't want to buy in on Jimmy Butler right now. If you're the Rockets, how many draft picks would you give up? A. A. Because I'm assuming that I'm giving him one or two of my young players. And it's Jimmy Butler on an expiring contract and he don't look you're like giving the up a, a young player or two? Yeah, you have to. Well, the trade we just did, there was no young player. Unless you consider Dylan Steven Brooks Adams, Dylan Brooks, that's not going to get the money. You need Reese Shepard or Jabari Smith Jr. to no, make the money. Jeff Green oh, I said Jeff Green. Oh, I mean. I'm not giving – hey, uh, let's just be real, Pat Riley. I'm not giving you young players. I would, I would give them Jabari the in that w- hypothetical. The window of you that You would give them Jabari in that? The what are you paying Jamar- Jabari when he becomes eligible, eligible next season? You said, what am I? Mm. Well, I know I ain't paying on the max. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, no, I ain't paying. That's the max. one way to look and, at yeah, it. Yeah, and the Rockets have already they showing us already they ain't paying. Yeah, they ain't paying their guys the max. I'm not. I'm not paying on the max, so that got me comfortable. I'm good with that, and I'm not paying Jimmy Butler the max. I'm not. Somebody is though. We know somebody is. It's the same I'm conversation not. we had. The Rockets yeah, are right. not. The Rockets yeah. are not paying Jimmy Butler. The what max. we just did, we just flipped it. Remember, we had the conversation with Aaron Gordon. Yeah. Like we know Aaron Gordon's gonna get paid, but I was saying I wouldn't pay Aaron Gordon that. We just flipped roles. Oh yeah. I'm, <laughs> The Nuggets kind of. Oh, and when I said I'm nah, not, I don't think so. You look at when enough. I said I'm not, I'm speaking for the Rockets. Yeah, because I agree. There is a team that's. I've been saying that out here when Derek was kind of like. Or if it's not a max, own. it's as close to a max as you're gonna really get. It's gonna be a big ass contract for Jimmy Butler, regardless. And that shit is stupid. And that's what I'm saying. Just don't do. If the Rockets are probably not thinking about it, they need to take their ass and just just chill. Yeah. We're good. We're good. We got everything we need right now. There's no reason Definitely. to push the timeline. Because even adding Jimmy Butler, are we looking at the Rockets like they beat no KC in a seven. No, no but. Uh, a thing that in a segment that we're going to do later in the show, a thing that's going to be a reoccurring theme for me and, and the talking points that I have is desperation. And that's why it's like I agree with the statement KB had. It's like, is that the list that Jimmy Butler wants? Because that's different than the reality. Yeah. Because the Houston Rockets are everything but desperate. Yes. They're, they're third in the Western Conference right now with a young-ass team with all upside to look forward to. They if they if they said they wasn't breaking up their core for Giannis, which I think was bullshit, they damn sure should. <laughs> they damn sure not about to do it for Jimmy Butler. Yeah, no. And Especially a 35 year old Jimmy Butler. I look around the league, there's too much desperation elsewhere that I can see. The Pacers. Are uh, what the Pacers think about it? The Pacers are at 10 and thing? 15 around the Bulls and the Pistons. And with 20, it was cool to talk about the uh, the Pacers when we was 10 games in. Now we're 25 games in, mm-hmm. and there's still a lot of basketball left. 
Um, they play a little bit better at home, but they don't play like crazy at home. I think they what six and four, seven and four at home. They not like undefeated or no shit. God awful on the road. Just made the conference fine. They might have a desperation. The Kings. Yeah. I'm not saying they're going to ch- ch- no. trade for Jimmy Butler, but I'm just saying there's teams that aren't playing at the level that I think that they were hoping for. The the Warriors fell down to earth. Mm. I think the out of all of those, the Warriors makes the most sense. Yeah. But it's just a matter. Like, Wiggins has been so good. He has to be in his trade. So it's the Jimmy Butler trade is going to be hard to construct, whoever decides to do it, if somebody decides the to do it. The biggest team that's going to be really desperate is the Lakers. Yes. yes. They, they are the most desperate team in the league um, every um, year. The other team, the Clippers, yes. not that they're desperate, but they don't have anything to not buy into. The Hawks are a team. Why would the Hawks not buy on anything? They need to try to compete as much as they can because they don't have their pick, just like the Clippers. It, caught, it makes no sense for the Clippers to not be aggressive because the only upside is you eventually run into a, a, a wall where you flop and you don't have no control of that pick. Yeah. So I think about those teams, too. Even if they're not necessarily the most desperate team in the NBA, it's like what benefit do you have of not being buyers? And those are the teams that I look at. I as wish like, there was a word I can get Jimmy over there to the Clippers. Realistic, you know? Bro, I keep seeing the stories about Kawhi and, like, how he wants to come back. He be he was crying. Yeah, he's, 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 and they're crying he's on the phone saying he let his team down. Yeah. Bill Simmons said that he's going to play before Christmas. Christmas. I don't know what to believe. Ty Lue was I'm like, I don't know where that, that came from. <laughs> yeah, I'm not believing that. Yeah, I wouldn't believe it either. But I, I, you know, you don't know anything about when Kawhi's hurt. You just kind of just get an update that Kawhi's playing today. That's kind of <laughs> how it goes. Oh, oh yeah, he's in the lineup. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy Butler in L.A. with the Clippers would be kind of cool, but you just can't get there. Norman Powell has to be in a deal, and Norman Powell is too good. Mm-hmm. He's too good to throw in a Jimmy Butler trade at this point. Or maybe this is the selling high that we talk about, but I just – it feels like the chemistry there is looking so good. Norm Powell been there for so many years. I like he the way the he one. plays off of hard. You too. know what I'm saying? Like Jimmy yeah. Butler doesn't do something like that. No, yeah. Especially with Norman Powell's ability to catch a shoot at a high rate. Like Jimmy Butler is such an intriguing player to put into your lineup. Because, yeah, he does do a lot of the other things. But also he does a lot of things with the ball. So, like, if I'm playing with a ball-dominant guard and James Harden, do I want to put bring in Jimmy Butler? Uh, I it just don't really make but sense. But on a, I, but then how do you ha, how do you say that? But then you're going, the Warriors. He's not going, you know. Yeah, but the Warriors don't really have a ball dominant guy. I think he could. I think his. I don't know. I think it's not the same as James Harden, yeah. but the ball is going to be controlled by Draymond and Steph Curry. Yeah, right? it is. But it also moves a lot. It's a lot of team. It's a different system than like the. Clippers. That's what I just said. It's yeah. not the same as James Harden, but the ball is being controlled in a certain way. So yeah. where Jimmy Butler is going to not have the ball. True. If you're if you're if if you're saying what I think you're saying, are you yeah. saying Jimmy Butler needs the ball? I wouldn't say he needs the ball, but I also feel like in a way he does. I don't think he does. I feel I like it's the other either. things that you kind of want him to really do. he's really good when he is. Also, cutting. I wouldn't really like. That's two strong personalities in one locker room. Him and uh, Draymond, Draymond Green. <laughs> I'm sure it's worked before. That's the other thing. That, that's the point I was hitting at. Like. Jimmy Butler's going to have to play with somebody that's going to have the ball. There's no team out there that's trading for at least in my mind right now, where they're just going to say, here's the ball at this point in his career. And then number two, somebody's going to be in the locker room. If you go to the Warriors, if you go to the Clippers, if you go to the Mavericks, the Mavericks got Kyrie and Luka. The Rockets got Sengun, Fred, uh, Green. They going uh Dylan well, he'd probably be in a trade. Oh yeah, true. But true. the point is, I don't see the teams that are on that we're thinking about or we're speaking on and thinking like, everybody watch out, here come Jimmy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Those days I don't really see. He would have to go into free agency and try to find a home like Brooklyn. Like, oh, is Brooklyn desperate? Maybe I can go there. But like these other teams he's talking about, he's gonna have to coexist with somebody. And I think Jimmy Butler can. What um mm-hmm. percentage would y'all say that he does get traded by the deadline? Fifteen. 20. I, I feel like it's pretty low, man. Yeah, 20. it doesn't seem likely. Just because a big contract, and it's just I don't see a lot of teams. If it is a team that's desperate, it's the Lakers. Before the episode started. I don't think they, they make that trade for Jimmy Butler. We were talking about how much AJ might have got paid. It's near $7 million according to the show. Okay. Oh, that's deep. Yeah. Decent. Um, what? $7 million? You're talking about decent? How much rookie, money you be making? That's a rookie contract, ain't it? Oh, no. They're it's probably like 11, a, 10, 11. Yeah. Something but, um. Decent. I just uh, just seen this. Ninja said he's making well, seven million a month. Well, it's a rookie contract. Depending on what pick, <laughs> depending on what pick. Oh, but man. um, 
Yeah, Jimmy Butler. I, I feel like y'all, like but I'm gonna go 45. percent 45. Uh -huh. Yeah. It There's feels, no reason for the Miami Heat to to like if they're if they're letting it be known, there's something there. They not they could do this quietly and realize it ain't shit there. But for them to go out and it's it's public, Shams is telling us, and this is teams he they're that far into it where he's telling them teams he prefer. Uh, so that yeah. so that means that this report is coming from Jimmy's side versus Miami side. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, but if it coming from either side, it's like I'm just thinking that like maybe Jimmy is just ready for it to happen there. Which yeah. means that the Miami Heat are gonna probably press mm -hmm. the button. There's some when one of them are saying something, that means that they're both in agreement that it needs I'm to just, happen. I'm just the way the Heat run, I just don't know what type of thing they would prioritize because I feel like with Bam and Tyler Hero. They would still want to stay competitive. They're not trying to empty out the tank to go get. I'm not saying that Jimmy Butler's even worth this, but like a bunch of first round picks. Right. Yeah. They probably mm -hmm. won't solidify guys that could help right now, and maybe a younger player with some upside. But what it does do is it allows you to get rid of fifty million dollars mm -hmm. annually, um, depending on what you bring back. And that's why I do think that there potentially could be a value in a trade like the Rockets, where Stephen Adams and Jeff Green are are the Miami Heat expiring. like, hey, yeah. he, no, but it's expiring. Yeah. And then all of that does is continue to create the Miami Heat way where they are able to go out in free agency or the, the trade market and convince people, hey, we have a program, we have a culture, you come here, and if you do what you do, success is going to come with it. And we have the results of showing you we didn't win a championship, but Jimmy Butler never looked as good as he did until he was with, with us. You know, LeBron James won with us. The mo you know what I mean? The most he's ever won was with us. Dwayne, what you know, like they have a yeah. history of of showing the example. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, I, I can see them falling back on that by saying that as long as we have some salary available, we're gonna make something happen. It kind of feels like in the contracts are different because DeMar was on a little bit longer, but Jimmy feels like a weird player too to trade similar to DeMar, where it's like you gotta find a Damn, they're a team that wants him and a, a good place for him to fit for a team to be like, yeah, we'll take on that 50 mil. It's almost worse because, and I didn't think about it until Derek said it, but, like, every time Jimmy comes up and moving teams, it's the play style, one. But then you, he said the locker room. Mm -hmm. So it's like, and then, like you just said, it's 50 million right now. He'll opt out, and who knows what that is going to look like after he opts out. Jimmy Butler also isn't, what is he, 35? 35. Yeah. I still think Jimmy Butler has basketball in the tank. Mm -hmm. I just think it's, it has to be a— His all-NBA years are probably over. Yeah. That's why I like a team like the Warriors from a structure. I don't know how much I like him with the Warriors. Is but he a top 100 player of all time? Off the top of my mind, I would say no. But uh, part of me also said yeah. It want, I, part of me wants to say like probably in the bottom 100. The reason I like say no is because when they did top 25, didn't was, sniff it for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 25 other guys, it's like. Because there, there's the book, the um, Hollinger and um, Aldrich, they just put together a book uh, of the top 100 players of all time. And I was watching an interview with Hollinger, and he was asked, like, who was the guy that didn't make it that you went to bat for? And he said Jimmy Butler. And he had some really good arguments about Jimmy Butler should have been, been in the top 100, but he didn't ultimately make it. I just thought it was interesting. Because, like, Dwight didn't make top 75, right? He didn't, which no. is a travesty because he deserved he would to. Make, he yeah. would make it. Who are some other guys that didn't make it? Um, So, I don't remember. I yeah, mean, a lot, yeah. Jokic didn't make it. Like, a lot oh, of the current yeah. players. Well, Jokic already had two MVPs at that point, and I, it, he didn't have the championship yet, I don't think. I think he won the championship that season. That makes me feel like Jimmy Butler is not. Yeah. Because the Luka difference between is, him and Jokic is yeah. the whirlwind. Because, like, mm -hmm. Luka's probably going to be in there, too. Mm -hmm. Um. Shay. Yep. Yeah, there's, Shea was mentioned there's too. current guys currently that I would put in above him. On some projections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Luka Doncic, I don't even know if it's really projection. I just think Luka's probably just at this point, career. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, at this point, he, did, he just got to be in there. Yeah. But the yeah. argument was like, Jimmy Butler was the best player on two championship runs. And not a lot of people were able to say that. Yeah. So yeah. guys that didn't make it, Clay. Right. Tony Parker. Clay Drake, felt some type of way about it, too. Draymond, yep. Kyrie, Chris Bosh, Pal Gasol, Alex English, Tracy McGrady, Vince Carter, Dwight Howard. That's already... That's like 10 <laughs> to 15 names you didn't and then you, and that's But let's be real. Some of the 75 was from the 50s and 60s that didn't deserve to be there. They were grandfathered in because yeah. of the 50. So you take some of those plumbers out. Are they going to do that, though? No. Mm -hmm. and they should. I didn't buy the book yet. So I don't know. I don't they, know if they get that. They shouldn't. Because this, we talking NBA 75 versus 
two writer seventy five. Yeah. I mean hundred. So it's because not if, even if a uh, if my granddad was Dolph Shays, I'd probably be like, hell no, I'll keep him in there. Right. <laughs> right. It's easy to say. I yeah. forget him, but man, if that's my if that's my grandpa boy, we going we going to war for that. I feel that. What's the next rumor meal? Uh, Jeremy Grant, Anthony Simons, and Robert Williams the third are receiving interest in the trade market. Um, this is going to be very interesting because um, for Portland, they front office got a they can if they execute on this, they very decent. Especially <laughs> yeah. talking about draft capital, they can get in return for this. I'm like, very excited to see what name it back. was. It was. Robert Williams, Anthony Simons, Jeremy Grant. Grant. But no Aiden. No. Okay. That makes sense. Big contract and everything. I like Robert Williams going to the to the Pacers. I like him anywhere that needs I a keep, center. Me too. Yeah. Him, Pacers. the Lakers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I said the Pacers, mm -hmm. the Lakers. Um, those are the top two teams that I could probably see being very interested. Are you getting a first-round pick from the Lakers? Probably not. No. Um, I don't believe so. It's gonna be hard. I don't, I don't think, I don't think Robert Williams for anybody. Yeah, I would I, take Robert Williams on the Lakers. I think the two players you are. I bet you would. He's is good. Grant He's a good basketball player. Simons. Yeah, Anthony Simons makes sense for like a team that's struggling offensively. Um, maybe a team that has their two star players out with oblique injuries, which is crazy. But shout out to them. They did get that win without him. Yes. Who was um, that against again? That was against uh, the Suns. Suns. Yeah. The Suns, yeah. Suns look uh, yeah, awful right yeah, now. Yeah, bro. I, there's no. We KD gonna talk game. about them later, but yeah, they had. Talk about them now, bro. They had, and it's not even like. This is something that hit me, like, this is a few games ago. This is not even a game against the Magic. This is a game against the Spurs. They won. But this one, the, uh, I think this one, Kevin Durant had went down or whatever. He had mm -hmm. left the game early, and they pulled that game out. After the game, Devin Booker is walking in the tunnels. He said, he needed that one. Like, oh you can tell goodness. this, like, once Kevin Durant goes down, this team just drops, like, 10 levels. They're, like, 1-9 or 1-8 without him. Yeah. yeah. Mr. MVP, when yeah. it comes to value, the, the record speaks for itself, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, both sides of the floor. And they also missing Nurkic at this moment of time, yeah. too. So they're missing yeah. basically two starters. Um, Let's keep it a buck. I had a dream that Uso Igadora had 50. That's crazy. Swear yeah. to God, I had a dream about that like Boy, two nights ago. He, he praying that you had more of those. <laughs> right. It's, my, it's a good omen. But you yeah, put he that parlay. had a butterfly effect. <laughs> um, Hopefully, they do get healthy at the right time and they get it rolling. But right now, it's just not looking good. Right now, a lot of the teams team, that man. started off really hot. When is There's, enough going to be enough for this team? Like, and I'm not saying that they should do anything crazy at the deadline. I'm just saying, like. I think they give it a full another year. After this year? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Will Kevin Durant give it a full another year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's been hurt. True. KD, I don't think. It's KD, not like they're not. When he performs, they're damn near unfuckwittable. They was a yeah. two seed, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's and like just, you said, they if they can always go on a run. Yeah, put them back because the like they're twelve and eleven right now. They're sitting at the ten seed. They can go on. A, they can win a few games and they're back up to the six seed. Are they on a losing streak? Four Three games. games. Yeah, yeah. Three, three and seven, seven in, in the last, last ten. ten. So Jinx. it's not looking good, but also KD is just so damn good that he just gives us. They just need him on the court. Look. Is he? Are we getting at the point in his career where we should just accept the fact that he's going to play? Not it. Yeah, I, I kind of got to that realization a few years back, mm -hmm. uh, just because I mean he basically missed two and a half seasons of his of his career already with injury, and he still got that many points. And he, Bro, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it, he's got to be one of the craziest players in terms. That's why of I like, say he's the greatest goal I've ever seen. Yeah, in terms of like up there in age, but it just really hasn't affected his game in like explosiveness. Everybody's gonna lose that as you get up there, but like you don't finesse, lose height. Being able to just shoot the ball lights out. Basketball, just savviness and, like, IQ on the court is just, like, off the charts. And it's just, like, I seen a clip of him the other day where he was playing defense and he literally guarded almost every every part of the floor. Yeah, when he ran around. And then got a whole block on the other side. And it's just, yeah. like, he's still doing that, too. So what you going to say about him I hope that point? part of Kevin's career doesn't get lost as he The defensive gets, side? Yeah. Because yeah. I think over the last three to four years, he's been, like, a really, really good defensive player. And I think player. part of that is – Honestly, he just doesn't guard as much on the perimeter. Like, a lot of times he's parked with, like, the fours or maybe even a five, and it's like he just uses his length. He doesn't have to always exert so much energy on the perimeter. Yeah, I've, I've always felt like he was an underrated defender. I also think he's really good at being a good help defender, too. Like, yeah. he protects the rim well just because he is fucking 6'10". Um, he being, is he? Yeah, I don't think he's 6'10". Yeah, I, I think, think he's about 7'. I think Franz Wagner is 6'10". Well, you know they got him listed at 6'9". KD might be a 7' foot, man. I, remember, I, I thought it had came out officially that he wasn't actually seven. I seen that's KD what he wants us to believe. I think he'd be bribing people. <laughs> he was on, on uh, 
TV screen and seeing him in person is What's different. Up in Adams. He was on Up in Adams and they talked about it. And he was like, I don't know why people keep saying I'm seven foot. I'm really, I'm really closer to six eight than I am to six nine. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. I mean, he, is it just the lanky look? I think he I think he lying. I think he be lying. He got the KG thing. Even All, though he's but 50. Why, but at this point, like, I think why it's like do you keep that up? You at think 30? he's close to 6'8"? Who, me? Yeah. No, I think he's seven foot. Right. So you just said, do you think it's a lankiness? That's why it made me feel like you thought he, he wasn't. No, I'm just. When you look at when other I look players at him, in the I league, and you foot. know how tall they are, yeah. and you see Kevin Durant next to him, and that tells you everything. So how tall is LeBron? I think he's 6'9". Let's look at a picture of LeBron next to Kevin Durant. And that is why I He's looking like at Joel Embiid in his eyeballs. They are literally the looking at each other in their eyes. Joel Embiid just got more hair. Let's see. Uh, you said LeBron is how tall? You got LeBron at six tall. Okay. So let's see. LeBron next to LeBron. Which should be recent at the Olympics. Even before. He's like three inches taller yes. than LeBron in this picture. That's crazy. Like, come on, man. It's the, it's the, it's the real life Kevin Durant thing. Why won't he just give us his real height then? He gonna do it in this uh, Hall of Fame speech. <laughs> That's the way you do it. <laughs> That's when he finally gonna spill the beans. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the next one we got is that Herb Jones and C.J. McCollum are receiving interest on the trade market. Um, the Pelicans are currently five and twenty, and our last yeah, place right. in the conference. And with Ingram being out indefinitely, I guess this means that they're a team that can be shopping around their players. The C.J. part is interesting. What team is looking at C.J.? Not saying he's bad or anything. Yeah, but like I'm just I'm just curious. I was surprised to see that they're listening to offers on Herb Jones. I thought Herb Jones was like a lock, like a I dude he is a lock it. for sure. He'll lock your ass. Oh up. yeah, that's no, that's think, kind of why I thought they wouldn't be we shopping was, him. We was talking about it last podcast, but it's just like at the point that they're in now, he's still a very amazing player that people would probably they would probably give up a lot for him. Mm-hmm. So I think if you're gonna sell him, this is probably the time to do it while you're sitting at like what five and whatever you are. At yeah, the what bottom, are you getting back in return. You're, at least you're gonna getting get a, draft picks. At you're at least getting a good draft pick for Herb Jones. At least, at least a first. Yeah, and, and I, you I'm probably not even might get it's two. The right thing to do. He's such a player that it's hard to find. He's yeah. on a really good deal. Like when yeah. he signed a deal a few years back, and it's, it's aging gracefully. It's nothing. They're they're in such a weird spot in general. But nothing that Herb Jones is doing is preventing you from doing the thing that you want to do. Yes, exactly. So hypothetically, if you decide to switch towards a, a shift to a tank because we own the our pick is top four protected, Herb Jones being on a team doesn't hurt your chances of that pick staying at home. Yeah. So it it's really is like I guess we're selling extremely high on Herb as he's having another great season in the games he's played. Which I don't is what understand good it. GMs do. I don't understand it, man. Mm-hmm. I think that's what good GMing is about. I think it's easy to look at a player like Herb and fall in love with all of the things y'all just named and just keep them. But I think this is a time where you have to look at teams, look at the landscape of the NBA, and take advantage of desperation. Teams value everything that y'all just said to the point where you might get two picks for her. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You might get two picks for with her. The con- with that contract? With the contract alone, yeah. you have an argument of saying this is an all-world defender who's on a cheap contract or a fairly decent contract and you can get him right now, and he the things he can do for your team won't show up on necessarily the box score, but it's going to go. It's, it will, matter of fact, let me take a step back. It will show up on a box score, and it will go beyond the box score. If you're the Pelicans, what you have to do is put it out there and make sure you don't sell low. Yeah. Because low could be what they're telling you. Low To me, low for Herb Jones could be some shit where you think it's decent, but it's like you actually probably could get more. I think you may be able to get two picks for Herb Jones in the right situation and the right team. That's why I can't be a GM. I love the story of Herb. We got him in the second round. He turned to an all def- – well, he's already a great defender, but he's an all-defensive player. He spent his whole career here. I, w- I would hate to try to trade that man away. Yeah, and then that's it. how you'd be out of your job in two years. I would never take the job. Because it would just be like you have to be able to not but you also have, have to trust the emotional that- com- connection. But also, what if this team does get it going? We've said it, that the last three years. No, I'm, I'm speaking hypothetically. Let's say they do get healthy uh-huh. and everything's clicking, and you're like, damn, the one piece we missing is a Herb Jones. Well, well I think it also. So if you trade I Herb think Jones, so you're far probably away trading from everything. That. You're not trading just Herb Jones and keeping the rest of this team. Right, because it shifts their timeline. If we're trading for Herb for two first round picks, it's a 2026 and 2028. Now we're waiting for those picks to come to fruition, unless we're deciding to flip those picks for something else eventually. Yeah. We're. Now it gets me thinking, if you're doing that, you're trading CJ, you're trading her, why not take the offers on Zion? Why yeah, not take that, the offers on the other guys? That's the next thing. 
you, them saying that prepares me for that. You just probably have to wait because right now, who on earth is looking at a Zion trade? You at least have to let him get on the floor. You can't say, hey, Mike, I know he ain't played in a while, but trust me, you want him. <laughs> so it's like, we ain't even going to speak on that right now. He's going to play in Utah. But, hey, we got this right here. I know you could you, – you, it's going to be a while before I can convince you on Zion. We'll get to there. But I know you can – I ain't got to convince you on Herb Jones. But you, I don't think – hey, no way in hell you go and you trade Herb Jones and you keep the rest of that shit. There's no way. Do you? Uh, I'm speaking from a sense of you stripping it down. You trade 2030 for Herb Jones? You're taking too long, brother. I might, I might consider it. But again, I think there's I a point. I seen a mock trade where yeah. y'all was trading the 2029. For who? For Dorian Finney-Smith and Dennis Schroeder. So prepare yourself, brother. Yeah. If you're hesitant on Herb Jones, and you might be getting Dennis Schroeder and, and Dorian Finney-Smith. Because it, it sounds nice. It does sound nice. But a lot of times, like, it's not. I don't think there's really doing much for the damn Lakers. Like, the Lakers have a oh, much no. bigger problem. I'm in agreement, But that's why I said last episode, <laughs> when you have a Rob Palenka and a LeBron. Get ready for it, basically. He's, no, he's going to be on the hot seat to save his job. And DeAnthony they're Melton. Wonder, if I had that. That's the call. If I had no, no, the no, option. I'm sorry, Mike. Talk to me. What did you just say? <laughs> DeAnthony Melton. Pelicans. Two first-round picks. Herb Jones goes to the Golden State Warriors. Contract match up perfectly. I like it. Identical. And now you got her <sighs> to be on that parade. Wait, what, what years are those picks, enough. though, for Golden State? I don't know. I'm just talking. It's, it's got to be enough. a little bit down the road. As much as I love Herb Jones, it's not enough. Okay, we bring CJ in the front. In the, no, I'm just talking. Herb Jones. <laughs> you trying to put CJ in the deal? No, I was just talking. <laughs> now, Herb, Zion is in the deal. That's, that's how you Herb Jones it. gives me a Nick vibe. Ah. Uh, another. Yeah, I don't need another. We're not going to get him. <laughs> yeah. We're not going to get him. But I'm thinking of, like, a team that's going to be, hey, man, Play him 40 minutes a game. <laughs> Let him rock maybe out. Maybe it'll break Steve Kerr from making a 12-man rotation. You got a guy that can play yeah, all those minutes. Yeah, maybe you're absolutely right because that shit is Grizzlies. Not a, hey, bro. Pick up the phone. Hey, bro. You talking my M music. Him in Memphis would be crazy. You talking my no, music. Yeah, that fits Marcus perfectly. Smart, go ahead for the last year. You just go chill out in New Orleans, eat some gumbo. Then, you know, they're going to lose Jake LaRavia this offseason. He could probably be in a deal. That way you get something for him. Hey, you don't even need to throw. You, Marcus Smart could go somewhere else. John Conchar, six million dollars. Jake Laravia. But Herb together. Jones make he don't make six. No, no, he makes oh. twelve. He makes okay, 12. twelve. Oh yeah, yeah. The so twelve or or Luca Nar last year, ten million. Boom. Yeah. December fifteenth. <laughs> he be getting DMPs occasionally. Yep. Oh, well, Jake laravia has been so damn good for them. Everybody's been good. Jake Laravia has been really, he's really a good. Jake Laravia has been one of my. <laughs> he don't look. Like, when we he did our, like no young. When we was texting yeah. for well, he's not young by any means. He's yeah, just he a was a four year player. Yeah. Um. I, I snatched them quick when we was all picking our teams. Like, let me get the Grizzlies because I just love what they do. Yeah. <laughs> I love what they do. I love what they do. Any other rumors? Oh, uh, yeah. We what got rumor them. was that? The Portland. We get to from Portland to Herb, Herb Jones. Jones. No. No, no, no. That, that was the that CJ was a rumor. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Uh, those were the three main ones that came out. I had some from last episode that we didn't touch on. Um, the Terry Rozier is also a potential guy that should be on the trade market. This is from Mike Scotto. Um, that's your boy. Is it Scotto or Scotto? I actually have no idea. I've always wondered. Do you know? Anybody nope. know? Uh, the Los Angeles Lakers, the Heat, the Bucks, the Warriors, and Cleveland, all guys, not guys, teams that are monitoring Cal Kuzma. Hey, Cleveland, don't pick up the phone for Cal Kuzma. I am no, praying what's, you. What's, what's the – what's the, what's the, what's the, what's the going to change it around price? there. The asking price has got to be dirt cheap. But even then, I don't want Kuzma. If also, the, the Bucks being everybody's trade rumors, they can't trade they for can't, nobody. They can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, if the Bucks can get Herb Jones, I'll be like, okay. They can't aggregate. They do can't they have do it. They, no, they got the, Pat Connaughton's nine million, but the Pelicans wouldn't take that shit. Did they also yeah, have picks the to contracts give up? Or had no? the magic because they just gave a bunch right? for Dame. For, didn't the Bucks? They? for a second April team, it has to be identical. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so yeah, they out the water. Um, oh, unless Bobby makes twelve. Let's Bobby see. Bobby is over twelve. Fifteen. I'm trying to cook up. I'm uh, I'm trying to get the fans. The way up. the way y'all navigate y'all phone confuses me. You and Mike always say because forever. you could just Bobby's Google making twelve point five. Oh, I was I want the fans phone. Twelve point me too. Twelve point five versus twelve point nine. I don't think. Damn. You gotta get that second April. You need you need a couple hundred thousand dollars more. Bobby. So what you do is you call Leon Rose and say how you do that again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how, did you, how did you get Daquan Jeffries to the Hornets and now he's playing real minutes? But um. I seen a thing 
And I want to actually, I actually made a video about it. I want to read some of the trades. Her Jones on the Bucks would be crazy. You know, that shit would, that shit would be the that would amazing be a, that would for be the damn season. Beast. Yeah, that's the, that's a 2K ass trade. Dame over there like, bro, I don't know what you could do, but if you make that happen, we well, going to win the this. The Dame say he's a great defender, so you put him and Herb Jones together. Oh, the greatest yeah. backcourt. And you got Giannis? <laughs> Come on now. No, I'm sorry, Dad. He never said he was great. He just said Miami he was great. Heat receive De'Aaron Fox. Pass. The Kings receive Terry Rogier, Hami Hakez, Jr., Nikola Jovich, Khalil Ware, and a 2030 first round pick unprotected. So this is De'Aaron Fox asking out. I don't like it if I'm the Kings. I don't think that's enough. That would be, yeah, the only reason that deal happens is if De'Aaron Fox says, I don't want to play here no more and send me to the Heat. I don't even think that happens if that happens. Read, read the package yeah. again, what they get back in return. It Terry was- Rozier, Hami Hakez Jr., which I think is stupid if you're trying to bring Fox, you want to keep a guy like him. Nikola Jovic, I mean, Khalil different. Ware, and 2030 first round pick. I mean, if you're getting De'Aaron Fox, you got to give us something. For sure. I yeah, would just give another, pick. I would give another pick. But even then, none of those young players, if I'm the Kings, are the ones that are like, yes. Absolutely. That's, that's the yeah. one we want. My argument is like, if... If the Miami Heat are willing to give you that, somebody else is topping that package. Somebody else is topping that package. I won't be. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility for like exploring that trade with De'Aaron Fox. Kind of talk, like, Mike. Good. That's what good GMing does. It's just at this point, you're you're in a a standstill right now with the Demar Derozan trade. Like at least you had a little bit of leverage, but now you got three players wrapped up, and honestly, they just not. They don't look as good as you thought. It's they was not look. with any GM. Would want to do. It's not what any fan would want to hear because De'Aaron Fox is brilliant. He's been phenomenal for that team and the community. You was able to see him be a, a young man, growing to a man. He got a family, but what, he what, went from a peanut he head a family. to the Goku. He does. To now got he, he gets, I remember right? when he first came. He didn't know shit about. He was talking about Goku yeah. and shit. his wife a Hooper too. Now you know he got kids on the sideline. <laughs> but that is a big part when of you it, think like about the traded. future of the franchise i agree with mike i just don't see any parallels to where you don't you you can't just trace a bonus and re- retool this team you're you know not what I mean? you can't find a trade for the bar after just trade it like, for him there's so no way your only other option is to just i also just don't see a team that makes sense either for the fox yeah that's shit i bet a team will make you make sense <laughs> <laughs> De'Aaron Fox hit yeah. the market. He'd be the hottest name on the. Oh man, we had, we had see, see some dude teams. Drop sixty. We had see a team oh, you move around. Who everything. Who De'Aaron Fox is. It's like the Lakers will give up all three of those tradable first. And guess what I'm doing if I'm the Kings? Saying get off my fucking phone. Shit, those man, first round ring picks. Fox. Post LeBron might be one of the most valuable things on the market. It right is, now. but De'Aaron Fox is the type of player where you you need that and something to show for it immediately. You can't sit around to 2030 like, hey, but we got them picks. <laughs> And he's young, so yeah. he kind of makes the Lakers not necessarily suck too much. True. Because I'm thinking about the Lakers where it's like in 2031, ain't no LeBron, Anthony Davis is going to be seven years old. He already, what, how old is Anthony Davis? 31. He, no. 30. Two at the least. He's 31 and 32. 32 at the least. He's going to be 38 by the end? <laughs> if he even stays. 31. 31. Birthdays 30. in a few months, too. So AD has only missed 10 games in his last 150. He's been, yeah. I, I've said that, like, these last couple of seasons, he's kind of broken that narrative of uh, just, like, he can't play games consistently. Yeah, street close is no longer a thing. Day to Davis is no longer a thing. The actual number is he's played 150 out of his last 160 games, mm-hmm. which is pretty pretty impressive streak, which sounds crazy because at one point in time, that, it's like, eh. But, then, like, now in NBA, 150 yeah, out of 160. I, got that same I give him yeah. credit, too, because, I mean, a lot of the Tic Tacs and day-to-day stuff came from, like, he would fall. He got to go to the locker room and stuff like that. He's been battling through these injuries, mm-hmm. man. Yeah, some he, of that stuff still happens. He does fall all the time still, but he's, like, He's been battling the through horse. these injuries. So. Uh, that, was the, that was it with the rumors. You got any more of those trades? That first one, I'm saying, hell no. If I'm the Miami Heat, sign me up. But if I'm the Kings, no joke. No, 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 no dice. No dice. Uh, no. The Houston. Talking to me. Oh. Did you give that? <laughs> were you confused, though? Nothing. <laughs> you thought you gave that trade? No, I didn't. Oh, I'm gonna say, well, I thought you said I not have anything else on trade. <laughs> this trade is god-awful. <laughs> this trade down there made me throw my phone. Okay. The Houston Rockets receive Julius Randle. I, I don't even want to hear the Rockets. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> the Timberwolves receive Jabari. Steven Adams, Jeff Green, and a 2026 second round pick. Why would the Rockets do that? I don't know. That yeah. would be disgusting. That's Why would the Rockets do that? They don't want to pay Jabari. 
But, but you have to, but you still got to pay Julius Ram. Maybe they feel more confident in him. Well, yeah, but even no, though no, not, you think he may want to put cheaper. up with, Jab- uh, with Julius Ram? Nah, Randall? nah, he don't. Because you kind of have to. Well, I guess you don't have to close with him because Nas closed over him a few nights back. Tari Eason yeah. will probably close, but yeah. you're not. You don't want to not close with a guy that's getting thirty million, right? Or close <laughs> to it. Yeah, that he don't even fit the Houston culture. No, either. that that he don't fit. No, don't you don't bring when you got good vibes like that. You just don't bring in a guy like that. Yeah, no, nah, pass, big pass. Oh my god, <laughs> I don't even know how you can build that trade and think that that's the one. <sighs> that makes sense for both teams. Oh, Lakers received Dorian Finney-Smith and Dennis Schroeder. This is what I was talking about. The Nets received D'Angelo Russell, Jalen Hood, Shafino, Cam Reddish, Christian Wood, and a 2029 first round top five protected pick. That sounds nasty because we're giving up a first round pick for that, but they they're first round worthy. Sure is averaging 20, not 20, 17.9 and seven assists. And you told me you ain't know about her. You might have to get both for her. <laughs> my my I mean, my response to that is just like. Where does that put us in the grand scheme? That's of what all of the trades that you're gonna be hearing is gonna have the question too, because I don't think y'all getting Trey Young. Are they both <laughs> expiring? No, uh, I don't believe so. Okay. I think uh, maybe Shooter is. I think Dorian Finney Smith might. may I have think a Shooter player, is have a player uh, option. That's one of those trades. Like, yeah, it makes sense, but also it's like whatever. You do get better. It might be a year on that yeah. Shooter. I don't. Dorian it might be one is left. better than the wings that you're giving up. Finish Shooter is better than D'Lo, so you are getting better players, but. Is Dennis Schroeder better than D'Lo with the Nets? Or is he going to be – because the role that the Lakers are going to have either or those guards playing is going to be different than the opportunity in Brooklyn. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Even though I liked Dennis Schroeder when he was last with the Lakers. You no, know, he was really good until it came playoff time. <laughs> kind of similar to D'Lo, actually. Yeah, um, Dorian Finney-Smith has a $15 million player option that he's probably going to take. And another trade we have is the Pistons receive Zach Levine. The Bulls receive Isaiah Stewart, Tim Hardaway Jr., Simone Fontecchio, and a 2027 second-round pick. So the Pistons trade actually goes through this time. So Zach's actually healthy. I like Isaiah Stewart a lot. Because we're going to trade Vucevic in a different trade. We need a center, right? Yeah, this article called him the center of the future, though. I hated that. I wouldn't go Isaiah that far. Stewart. Yes. <laughs> go that if, far it, if that lineup go through, what's their lineup look like? <laughs> they K Ivy. Levine. No, no, no. This article says, um, "Oh no, you're right. Yeah, yeah." Tobias and Endura. They already have starting to plant their flag as like a defensive oriented team. This don't help that. <laughs> 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 no, Let me also correct. He didn't say also he's offense stinks right the now, future. So. He was just Stewart gives them a young backup center to eventually replace Nikola Vucevic. So it's different than the future. And then the last trade is. LaMelo Ball goes to the San Antonio Spurs, and the Hornets receive Keldon Johnson, Trey Jones, Malachi Branham, and three first-round picks, two in 2027. Um, That's one of the Hawks, right? Yeah, unprotected. Mm -hmm. I don't like this trade. Yeah. I like Stephon Castle learning under Chris Paul than being the point guard. Yeah. I like LaMelo, but – he would be that, an interesting player to see under Greg Popovich. I think the Spurs have to play it out until they know exactly where they're at and what they have because that draft capital could get them something that could change the entire trajectory of what's going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, like, if you hold on to those assets till next year and Vic is playing MVP level, year two, Stefan, whatever, however you – and then you can then make your move, oof. What about the Hornets? How do y'all feel about trading LaMelo away? I think this is the same conversation I've had with the Aaron Fox, Herb Jones. I understand you don't want to do it. I understand fans don't want to hear those type of things. And me saying these things kind of make them probably a little salty because they feel like I'm being negative. But I think when you want to progress your franchise, I look at Sam Presti. And I look at selling high on Paul George and your entire franchise is altered because of that. Mm-hmm. And so I think I'm curious. How does trading LaMelo now help your franchise in the future? Because you have LaMelo locked up long-term right now. Yeah. Since you've had him and current now, you've been a bottom team in the Eastern Conference. There is nothing there that makes me feel like there's anything remotely different. They won 40 games one year, don't forget. It's a ticking time. Yeah, they did. Was Steve Clifford, was he the coach? Yeah, I remember. Uh, They still didn't make the playoffs. There's a ticking time bomb that he's going to eventually want to go somewhere else. So I would just trade him now before he has to demand it. Because you're still, you're still. What, what, what are they? What, what, what stage of their they at? 
AP. That's what still, I'm. Still that's why I, if I'm Charlotte, that's the only thing that's like holding me back a little bit. And it does make sense, I guess, at the same time to do a reset. But it's like if we trade Lamelo away, we back at square one, basically where we Not just started. Not really. Miller. We got Brandon Miller. No, that's what I mean. We're, I mean, instead of Lamelo, it's Brandon Miller at this point. But we still gonna have to hit on all our picks. You used or to have to do like that with Lamelo. You just have to trust that you can hit those picks, and yeah. I don't trust these front offices no more. You can't. How can you? If you're a fan of the Charlotte Hornets, how can you trust them? You can't. James the, Book Knight. Well, yeah. <laughs> but Kyle for every Jones. James Book Knight, there is a Brandon Miller who now it looks perfectly, but at the time they got cruci- crucified for not taking by non basketball knowing people. Pierre, or even Pierre and. As our, I don't know who does the enjoy stuff, but as Pierre Anderson, as they called me yesterday, said, "No, that was the right pick to make." Listen to Pierre. That you know how you can trust them. Give give me a job. I don't want much. Should I drove every car? That's a Jay Z bar. I don't want much. Should I drove every car? Some nice cooked food. Some nice clean job. <laughs> Y'all too young. But I know a song. I, I, give I, me I, a consultant. Which what song is it? I don't remember. <laughs> But I know those lyrics. Give me a consulting job, Charlotte. Give me a consulting job. They got I'll take, um, Steve Clifford as a consultant. I'll take three. Steve Clifford's a consultant for them? I'm just talking. Oh. I'll take three. I just feel like he's always in the organization one way or another. <laughs> 325000 And I'll consult you. I'd be cheaper than the dude they paying now. I guarantee he probably is. <laughs> All right, we got to take our break. I just want to do my job from home. When we come back, we got to get to the biggest X factor for all 30 NBA teams. Why should you bet with Caesar Sportsbook? Two words, Caesar's rewards. Every bet brings you closer to the type of benefits only Caesars can offer. Hotel stays, VIP experiences, sports and concert tickets, and more. It's not just an app, it's an empire. You ever check your email, you get something in there, you're like, who? For what? That's what just happened to me. Greg um, Popovich? I wish it was Greg Popovich. Get well soon, my brother. Yeah. Um, we got X-Factor for all NBA teams. And the way we did it this time around is not everybody giving their own X-Factor for the teams, but we split it across the, the panel. Every player, person here has seven teams, which means there are two teams that won't have an X-Factor. You could probably guess which two teams they were. Sorry, Wizards and Jazz fans. Uh, here we go. Your X-Factor for the Wizards is um, getting off of Cal Kuzma that allowed Bilal Kulabali and Alex Star to do their part. The X-Factor for the Utah Jazz is Danny Ainge. <laughs> here we go. Yeah. When was the last time y'all watched the Utah Jazz play basketball? Like a, a game, a full game, start to finish. It's even a game I referenced earlier. I didn't watch that whole damn game. Uh, well, yeah, I, switched off. Off. I, was, I switched off. I can't even say I watched. Boy <laughs> I've done it before. You remember OKC lost by 55, 60, like two, three years ago? No. I watched that game in its entirety, baby. I would OKC say probably fans, one where they played the Lakers, though, too. Yeah. Well, yeah. When your favorite team is doing the blowing out, low-key, I'm there for that. Yeah, yeah. You get the 19th best player to play real minutes. Tory Craig. Tory Craig. Mr. Megan Astallion. I want to see you hoop a little bit, brother. Anyway. Getting Megan and turning into not getting much playing time is kind of crazy. You win some, you lose some. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would say. That boy was all, was someone where he got bet, where he got Meg to oh, And I bet he wouldn't change a thing. This is it. <laughs> I bet he wouldn't change a thing. This is the game. game the November season, 30th. <laughs> Kyrie had 39 and 7. This is the game they won without Luca. Ah, uh, I ain't been there since, brother. Mm-hmm. No sense of uh, That's the last jazz Oh, no. I, I ain't going to lie. I may have tuned into this Laker game. Like it's one jazz? by one. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. when Colin Sexton. Yeah, when Colin the Sexton. They said he lost the ball. Uh, he got the shot up. He got. They forgot. called a timeout, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Walker they, Kessler was going. No, he got the layup, but Will Hardy called a timeout beforehand, oh, yeah. and they lost the game after that. Yeah. Um, and I didn't watch that game in the tiger. I watched like the last two minutes. Anyway, Mike, give us one of your teams and the X Factor revolving around that team. Uh, I'm going to start off with the one I'm going to get out the way. It was the Boston Celtics. Probably the team that people are thinking are going to repeat this year. Been still looking like, one, if not the best team in the NBA. Uh, hard to pick one for them, but I'm just going with not falling in love with the three-point line. They are – it's literally kind of their identity, but some games they can kind of fall in love with it. And if it's not falling – They'll just keep shooting it, and sometimes they can dig themselves into a hole. Granted, this team is still good enough where even in those situations, they still pull those games out where, like, they're just a better team. It could be a little bit of a detriment when it do come down to being the championship team. You just don't want to be in a time. You don't want to give other teams a chance to beat you just because you you don't want to – you want to keep jacking up threes. Yeah. I think they're starting to come down to earth, like, 
the last couple of games, Jason Tatum isn't shooting as well as he did. Well, at least I'm talking about from three ball. He's not shooting as well as he did to kind of really start it off the season. Derek White has been kind of slowly uh, just kind of coming down back to earth. So not to forget about the in-between game. Uh, for me, uh, the Bucks. No notes, I guess. Uh, I got Doc Rivers slash the front office. Um, Doc Rivers, this team, when you're talking about Doc consistently getting outcoached in the playoff series, this is this team's ultimate goal is to win championships. They went out and got a coach that throughout his history has shown that he can get out coached by opposing coaches, even if he has a 3-1 lead in a series. So when you're talking about having to beat the Nick Nurse, the Joe Mazzulas, the Eric Spolstras, uh, the Kenny Atkinsons of the world, Doc Rivers is going to have to come come with it. and I, come, with, I, come with the? Yeah. And then the front office is essentially, y'all and the, y'all the second April team, what moves can be made? Y'all link to a lot of players and contractually don't seem like y'all had the ability to unless y'all have something up y'all sleeve that we don't know. So what can y'all do with this deadline that can give this team some sort of hope that they can win a championship? Okay. I'm, I'm glad you didn't keep it on the court. Um, I'm not mad at that. I'm going to add I'm gonna add one to each one of y'all's. The rim protection for the Boston Celtics probably be the big thing. And then transition defense. Slack, Przingis. Yeah. Um, and transition defense for the Bucs because it's back to being awful like it was with A.J. Griffin. Yeah. I could see that because, yeah, they, they don't look like a team that would be good in that, at transition defense. They're so old. It'd be hard to get back. No, like the they don't communicate. <laughs> Sound like the Lakers. Four transition t- defense teams don't communicate. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to go with my first one. Um, for the Bulls, I think the biggest X factor for the Bulls, because obviously we're not competing for nothing this season, is how much we have to pay Josh Giddy for the future. I think that sets up basically the entire rest of this timeline that we're trying to put together. Because it will be kind of awkward and weird if we are committing to a rebuild, which I hope that is the case by trading Zach and then trading Vooch. But, oh, don't forget – we also paying Josh Giddy $30 million now for yeah. the next four years, and it might be the end of his contract by the time we're relevant again, if that ever happens. So it is a bit weird. I mean, everybody and their mama can recognize that the Bulls front office has just been doing bad shit here and there. Um, and also, he doesn't close many games at this point. Yeah. So it's like, how much money are you committing to him, and what does that mean for not just the next season, but the next four years or whatever contract you get? How much money, money would you pay him? I, I would give him mid twenties, yeah. low twenties, if that. I would say he would get a, Yeah, he would probably get the Patrick Williams deal. Wow, that's like seventeen AAV. I don't think Josh Giddy has shown me anything. He showed you more than Patrick Williams has. He has, but also, like you said, he can't close games. It's like a fine. Patrick Williams only closed games because he's a big guy. We don't have any wings. Like if we had another, because one of the reasons Josh Giddy doesn't close is because we have seven guards on the team. So it's yeah. like if Io's playing better, he uh, Patrick Williams doesn't have any competition. So that's why he closes games when he's healthy, because him and Tory Craig. KB, if he was there, if he was doing his job, he would close. He's that brother is six eight. No, yeah. I'm not, and I'm not saying that he's he is doing his job. He said he don't have any competition. I'm saying that Josh Giddy not closing is a him not doing his job, but also he has Lonzo Ball, he's got Kobe White, he's got mm-hmm. Zach Levine, he's got Io Dosumu. He's competing with four other guards. Patrick Williams is not competing with anybody at that spot. So regardless of Patrick Williams is ten for ten or zero for ten, he's gonna close games because he's a, a big wing. While Josh Giddy, if he's 0 for 10, there's no question he won't Wait, close. You didn't even name Zach Levine is still considered a guard as well. Mm-hmm. You know, so, so that's that's all. I even mean, he'd be playing small forward. I think Josh Giddy has showed us more than Patrick Williams, so I think he deserves to make more than that. But I also don't think that 30 million number, what he wanted, is realistic. I hope that they structure it, take some Raphael Stone magic and structure it where it's not a four-year complete deal, where it is maybe multiple two years and then an extra team option player. Team option. Stop giving out player options. Team option and so on and so forth. Well, agents aren't going for that. Team right, option. you said that like it was easy. <laughs> it is two K. I'm telling you, bro. All we need is a reset in the front office. Stop giving these players everything they're asking for. <laughs> well, now, how I, about we have one meeting with I all thirty with, GMs I, sit in the same room? I agree with that. But and say, Eric Gordon, you don't get thirty five million dollars. And then you know what Rich Paul going to do? He going to go in there. Well, he going to go to a different league with the Aaron Gordon. He going to get exactly what the, he going to get exactly what he want. No, no, no. I think the problem is giving it to every player. Some players, you just got to say, what you want, stuff. <laughs> People have player options that don't deserve to have player options. You're not that good. I agree. Name them. Already- name them. Um, you ain't bad like that. I will. Let me look them up. Yeah, well, look them up and name them. Smith name 55 one? of them. <laughs> Let us never get an interview again. <laughs> <laughs>
When I be trying to get when I be trying to get that interest from that free agent, I'm definitely putting that that player and option on the back end. And you know? boom up a little bit. It's saying with no trade clause. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that the um the player option has just be, became one of those things like, yeah, it's part it's just part of the contracts now. Mm. Why does Reggie Reggie Jackson have a player option? I don't know. Oh. Yeah. Why does he get to determine? Uh, he has the shittiest year of all time. Oh, well, I still got $5 million next season regardless because I'm going to opt into that. <laughs> because another team wasn't willing to give him that. And that's how you got him. But I, I understand that. But it's just it's too much. It's I know. Much. I'm in agreement with you. Christian Wood. <laughs> what has Christian Wood done in his NBA career <laughs> to have a player option where he determines whether or not your team pays him $4 million next season? That shit is nasty. That's how they got him. Yeah, yeah no, that had to no, be on that little ass contract. No, no, no. Also, real shit, though, that is legitimately a bad GM they got over there. So. Because <laughs> it's also Jackson Hayes. Yeah. It's also Cam Reddish. Cam uh-huh. Reddish, had, he opted into the his whole team. LeBron that, James? The whole team. No, let me chill. The whole team. Yeah. Legitimately, the whole team. Was Max Christie's new deal a, a player option at the end? It, it's, I'm sure it had some options. <laughs> When's the last time you seen a deal that just wipes out? I mean, I'm sure you can name them, but yeah, name I, can, one I, can, I couldn't think of one right off the top of my head, but I know one did recently. Dennis Schroeder deal may be one that just wipes out. I'm just saying, we don't get to the point where we're at now. Well, actually, I take that back because the players who contract just wipe out. Player option for maybe, Max Christie. Maybe, yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> and they had the leverage. All yeah. of it. They had all. There's. He would have just took his bag. He would have just been happy to get a long-term deal secure. You're going to be in the NBA for the next four years. Some mm-hmm. players just want that. It's it's a relief if you're a young Chris Ma- uh, Chris Maxi uh, Max Christie who ha- Chris Maxi <laughs> if you're a young Max Christie who hasn't had the the footing in the NBA sometimes it's just a relief to know okay I got another four years I could count on X amount of millions to be hidden at account and this now puts a team in a position to have to believe in me and that's all you want to need yeah over time out of player options. speaking of about just some contracts and stuff like that I think we mentioned it before about players just getting paid like extended amount of the time like over extended amount of time even if they not with the team i look into the blazers one they were still playing eric bled so much. Oh, we did that in the youtube oh, video yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah um shout out to juan soto while we here my goodness i guess if the if could you imagine the nba without a salary cap we would be having deals like that the lakers would legitimately yes. just run wild <laughs> oh, the Clippers. Steve Ballmer's a payer. Yeah. yeah. He w- he He's would still really top do 10 richest man in the world. I've just seen a little thing. There would be was... no parity in the league. Yeah. But then again, well, yeah, basketball is different than baseball. So you're right. Because New York would have all the players. Miami would is have Dolan all the players. Is Dolan paying that? Yeah, he probably will. Never mind. Miami would just, everybody would want to be in the Miami. The but you know, teams. The, the thing I would say about that is the NBA is also, a lot of these guys be getting paid and they do the large marketing. <laughs> Let's not refer to that for my friend, please. <laughs> Shout out to Larry, but I don't, I'm not blaming him. But Steve baseball Ballmer. players, baseball players don't be resting like like pitchers rest. But baseball players like being out in the field, man. Baseball players like logging games. Look, look, look. Who are the richest owners in basketball? Steve Ballmer's number one, one hundred and forty-two billion dollars. It's a ridiculous amount of money. But they I can, just seen him on a list where he was tenth of all owners. No, with money. He could take that one. The, ten richest, the, by the ten richest men in the world, he was last. That's, that's the best insane. time to be last. That's still a great it? list to be <laughs> no, on. No, that's my point. <laughs> he said it's a great time to be last. Yeah, he ain't it's last. the first time I've, I've. He's the richest American sports owner in the world. Damn. By so, a wide margin. So, you know what, not, Steve Ballmer? By $40 billion. You know what, Steve Ballmer? That's a big ass number. Austin ain't at his seat <laughs> right now. I would ask for the solo. But listen. Can I become his friend? Not now. Because all of it belongs to OKC. But there's going to be a time where you're going to get draft picks again. <laughs> Consultant, I'm here for you. All I need is an opportunity. Give me one draft. You know what? Let's just do a, a trial period. Instead of giving me 300000 just give me a hundred for that draft, and I'm going to make sure you, you leave He can do two hundred. He He a billionaire. Yeah, now. matter of fact, Mike is right. He might give be his me, ass with a hundred K. Give, give, yeah, give, give me two. Matter yeah. of fact. Give me, give me two, and some seats. You know he got the seats just for a couple games. You know that's all. Then he gonna sit you next. I don't want to sit next to you though. You be doing too much. You he gonna give me, you Paul Giorgio's seat. My mama told me somebody hit me, I gotta hit him back. And hey, you be doing too much moving. <laughs> he gonna do what? He gonna give you Paul Giorgio's seat. I don't want it. 
in his locker room. After I seen that interview today and he talking about Chris Paul drew the line, crossed the line, and his friends are asking him, is there anything that could be done? And he kind of like, no, I just deal with it. Um, Tough time for PG. Somebody else give out a team in their X Factor. Oh, Oh. yes, me. My team is the Nets. Their X Factor, I hate to say this, (laughs) but I'm just, this is a business. Their X Factor is league wide injuries and desperation. They're obviously not hoping and praying anybody gets hurt, but because teams are having injuries, it creates a desperation, and I think they can fully take advantage of that because I don't think that there's another team that has as many things to offer to the trade deadline. The only team that could rival them, I think, is the Portland Trailblazers. Yeah. Um, but even then, I think they have a little bit more with Cam Johnson, mm-hmm. Cam Thomas, potentially Nick Clark. The Trailblazers have a bigger money and longer money. Yeah. yeah. Well, with the – Knicks, I mean, the Nets, it's like expiring two-year deals, Mm mid-level type of deals, and I think that's going to be more appetizer for teams. And the more injuries that happen, the more desperation, the more value. Like, for instance, I don't think this trade is going to happen, but a fan put a trade in my comments because I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do a video reacting to some of y'all trades soon, so let me know some. And he had a trade where, like, the Warriors traded Jonathan Kaminga in some type of crazy deal, but they got back Cam Johnson. And it's like I don't think that trade is going to happen, but that's the instinct. That that's the instance in what I'm saying. Like if a team get desperate enough, Cam Johnson might get. You might get a team to overpay for a Cam Johnson mm-hmm. because sure. the market. I think that's almost inevitable at this point. The way he's performing, career year. So you, you take advantage of that multi year contract, even though it's like what twenty three million dollars yeah. a year, a little bit more expensive than you like could take advantage of that and, and and get more than what we thought initially. You might could get a fr- you might could get a first round pick for Dennis Schroeder. Right they could now. cash in. They could cash in this year. Literally. Yeah. Not to mention whatever Cam Thomas could get. I, I'm still mm-hmm. confused on that market as mm-hmm. well. But they could walk away from the trade deadline or post trade deadline looking really, really good. And Which, I did that for them in my series, and they have like ten first round picks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To think about how well they pivoted outside of the Kevin Durant era is pretty amazing. Yeah. Get your own first round pick back. Trade Kevin for a bunch of picks. And then get Mikael Bridges in the trade, then trade Mikael Bridges for five first round picks, and then trade Cam Johnson for however many picks. It's all it's perfectly done. Them now it's like hitting on those draft picks. Mm-hmm. That's it. I'm gonna throw out another team. Um for them. This is I have the Pelicans. I had did kind of two for these. Uh Pierre put in the chat, like, you know, try to be creative with this one too. For the Pelicans, just flat out, I put DeJounte and CJ. Obviously, they the Pelicans have been dealing with a bunch of injuries and stuff like that. DeJounte and CJ, usually they're like the Iron Man. Like, they play probably about 70-plus games. They got to kind of hold Herb it down. Too, right? Herb is like an Iron Man. I, I, Herb is, too. This year. Herb has kind of been in the lineup. So, I just – these are guys that's been missed time, at least for this season. Herb is missed time. He did. He just came yeah. back. Well, him, too. <laughs> 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 I'm talking about the top dude, like DeJounte Murray. That's part of the reason they brought My him fault, in. My fault, brother. Let me, let me shut up. But I want to go into a little bit deeper because, honestly – they probably not doing much this season anyway. I think they need to be one of the teams that get into a fire sale. Like, I, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility now after they talk about shopping Herb Jones. But How many games do you think Herb Jones played this year? Mm, I'll say 14, 16, yeah. Played seven. I feel like a lot more. <laughs> That's the type of impact he got, right? <laughs> I guess so. A bit more so Brandon Boston Jr. And I'm wrong. He hasn't been like some Iron Man. He's played... 76 last year, 66 before that, and then 78. So, I mean, kind of, sort of. Yeah. He's but, plays, he plays majority. I was just count, <laughs> I was counting out the Zion and B.I. because they no, seem no, like they've sure. been. I just went off into my own tangent in my own head. <laughs> but, and to, I mean, to, to get to the deeper part, I really think they're one of the teams that should be looking to, like, maybe we do sell on what we got, and this might not be the right path for us because for the last three, four years, it just not has worked out. Do it's you been think the they same have story. To? I don't think they have to, but I think it would be an opportunity for them. I think it would be a way to kind of get out of what they're in. If they look at it and like, you know what, we can kind of see the writings on the wall. We have constant injuries. If maybe if we can sell, we can't even sell high at this point, but if we can get off this and move on to the next chapter, it might be a better just wait instead of kind of waiting another two, three years for us to have the same results. I'm just curious of what David Griffin does. Like, is he the type to – fire sale and just kind of just blow this all up because it would be fun to see another young team go out and just go through the draft and be young and fun and i don't think so i think that's overblown being young and fun Mm -hmm. 
How many young and fun teams are in basketball right now to you? The Spurs. Sure. Um, yeah, that's one. Charlotte when they got LaMelo. I'm um, not counting that one. I'm not either. They don't have LaMelo. Sure. Well, right now they don't, but they've had them for a good portion of the season. Um, yeah. I that's mean, what Houston I'm saying. Rockets? Yeah, the Houston Rockets. OKC, okay, I'll give you OKC. Okay, OKC, okay, yeah. okay, Orlando yeah. Magic. Orlando. I just feel like when we talk about having the youngest teams in basketball, a lot of times it's not young and fun. It's fucking ugly. It's the Washington Wizards. It's the Utah Jazz. It's the current Charlotte the Hornets. But I think those teams, good, But that's, that's the part, though. Like, uh, we, I think front offices have done a pretty damn good job of this the last couple of years, convincing the fans that those draft picks are matter so much because we're going to hit those picks. And then they don't. And now it's like, fuck, yeah, James Booknight. Where's he in this league? Johnny Davis, who had a 7-0 run against, was that the Denver Nuggets you mentioned in the group yep. chat? Like, <laughs> shout out to you. It's, um, it's just Johnny one of those Davis. things, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like young and fun makes sense on paper, but if you don't have like a true 1A, young and fun doesn't exist. You're trying to find that through the players that you've drafted, and a lot of times you don't. All right, we're going we're gonna to pause the breaks a little bit. Mm-hmm. Young and fun exists. Y'all just need to do your damn job right. You I just say a lot of a lot of those franchises five, they they haven't really been taking care of all the like the what they Pelicans need to do. Were young and fun at a time they when were. they did the Anthony Davis trade and they had Lonzo Ingram Zion. Josh but that's Hart. not through the draft. They traded the best player in their franchise history, well, one he, of the two best players. That's what he's saying, right? The Pelicans trading, right? You said sell the team. But we were talking I think about draft fire sale. Oh, I mean, but regardless well, yeah, of what you're bold. bringing in, whether it's yes. young players or draft, I think it's just a better. It could be a better outcome than whatever this regime is going to get you in the grand scheme. Of yeah, because e- either that or you just be stuck in the middle just doing nothing. That's my I mean, main thing with these GMs and these teams and these owners, really, is like you have to accept what is there. We can all dream. We can all say, man, hypothetically, Zion come back and he doing it, – it take no work to do that. Us four up here can run the whole league if we just being optimistic about everything. But at what point do you sit back and look at the results? That's the hard part of the job. I understand – the appeal of what Zion could be. But what has he been? What has it gotten you? That's the toughest part about the fucking job, in my opinion, that these mm-hmm. guys don't want to accept and look at. But the ones who do, the Sam Presties of the world, they end up where they are. This is not Sam Presti's first time. There is also a team that was James Harden, Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, Serge Ibaka. That team existed too. So he knows something of what he's doing. Whether it's Getting rid of a Paul George when it's time to, whether as much as we love Russell Westbrook, it's a mutual thing that we should just – he is the embodiment of OKC, but we come to a mutual mutual agreement that it's it's the best decision for both of us. It's going to hurt our fan base losing him, especially after losing Kevin. But boom, we now have Shea Gills as Alexander, Jalen Williams, Chet, and nobody in OKC is giving a damn about the fact that we don't have Russ anymore. But he's like – he's a statistical outlier. He is. He's but the one case in out a of league 100. where it is always an outlier. <coughs> but what happens when there's always an outlier? It's a copycat league. Y'all need to I start agree. copying cat. I agree. The I was, right way. I was thinking the same thing. Like OKC is the they're the top of the crop when it came to that. But there's there's some space in between where you can get in with it. Oh, I'll, I can name another team. Danny mm-hmm. Ainge is the other one. You can you can name Danny Ainge. I'm also the team. The next thing I have the Memphis Grizzly. Their X factor is the development. Mm-hmm. Keep developing because when we get to playoff time, you're going to be secure enough and confident enough for Taylor Jenkins to say, I can sit John Morant in game two of the first round for four or five minutes because I have allowed Scottie Pippen Jr. all season long to gain confidence to be able to be out on the floor and execute what I need him to while our star player sits down. How many teams do shit like that? They don't. Yep. And that's why a lot of these teams suck. And I'm tired of it. That was a, that was a weird turn off. I didn't expect he, it to get that. It high. was, bro. I I just been so I'm happy. I'm just saying with it's frustrating when you lo- we are we have a job that we do a part of the media, but at the end of the day, we are what we are because we're fans. And I hate how the league is a copycat league, but they pick and choose with the copy. When everybody was going small and shooting threes, y'all copy that. But now when it's time to actually do the work and draft well, and how how many times now are we going to see a four-year player fall way later than he's supposed to and now don't connect us with the Lakers? Shouldn't we be at a point now where we say, huh? Or how many hotkeys with the Heat? Huh? We should start looking at these guys. <laughs> we still should think about upside and young players too. But we should start considering the fact that depending on what team we are and what state of the franchise we're in, 
We should start to look at who it, who can come in and give us exactly what we need. But we're so far from that because they don't want to do the hard part. At this point, they damn near not going to have no more choices, especially with that damn second apron. Like finding a, a rookie or a four year player that you can get and feel what you need. I feel like that just pays for a damn self on a rookie deal, especially for the first couple of years. Because he's more developed than a 19 year old. Yeah. 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 And I thought, I mean, Ryan Dung is young as hell, but I, the Suns did an excellent job this year in terms of like what they needed. Of course, they're still like in the grand scheme, they they're rookies. Have. They're the team that went and got Cam Johnson mm-hmm. in a year that everybody was like, what? Kobe White, what? What? Mm-hmm. And granted, so they're also Ryan the team Dunn that is- said they don't care about draft picks too. Mm-hmm. Who the Suns said that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. James Jones said that. I mean, I get you saying that when you get Kevin. Durant. And then they also did some stupid shit. Not getting a point guard for Frank Vogel. No, they ate him. Over Luca. That point guard shit uh, was oh. stupid though. That was before James. Yeah, Jones. true, true. I think. I think. Oh, I think. We, we, I'm not even gonna Google it. Let's give him the benefit. Yeah, of okay. <laughs> you can keep that one. You can keep that one. Um, uh, another team that I got. Um, I have the, the I had Orlando Magic. Um, something that's been kind of attacking them all year is health, especially with today's two star players. If they could just get healthy at the right time and go on a run that they're supposed to go on, because they. Right now, no, no Paulo, no Franz. This is a team that could fall down the standings. Can you they might up? have to go on another second half of the season run that they went on last season, especially when you're talking about not having your two all-star caliber guys. So if they could just get healthy and stay healthy, this team could be <laughs> – they're going to be back at the top of the conference. <laughs> it's the That's, obvious thing. Yeah, it just sounds so sweet. Yeah. This sound like, you be so you, giggly. <laughs> you do. Can, um, can you be the magic owner for one second? Yeah. How you doing, Magic Owner? <laughs> Pierre Andreessen. That's definitely Firm how they, handshake right there. <laughs> how they introduce each other. Can you, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Magic Owner? Yeah. Hire, hire me, Magic Owner, for a consulting job real quick. You're hired. No resume, <laughs> no nothing. <laughs> You're hired. <laughs> no background check. <laughs> my, my first work of order. Just looks like a good guy. Thank you. That's going to get you fucked up in a long, long term. Right. He looks, have. he looked like a good guy. I, I didn't see that. Zach had... Efron, a GM. <laughs> <laughs> He's handsome. Uh, I want to hold a practice where we don't practice. I thought you were going to say try out. Hell no. <laughs> so you can show up? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Him, Marcel. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Myself, I'm gonna make that team. Stop playing. Uh, I want to hold a practice, but we don't practice. What are we doing? Watching film? We're working out our obliques. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Three hours oblique workout session where we just target the obliques and make sure nobody ever has an oblique injury again. Sounds counterproductive. Sounds like you're overworking the muscle. No, 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 no. We're not gonna overwork it. We're gonna make sure that it's not tender and falling off that bone. Hmm. I don't even know if it's on the ball. <laughs> hey, I, I don't know. I'm Actually, still that's one of the mu- muscles that I don't even know where it is. Where is your old? It's week? like in your abdomen or pec, right? Oh, okay. Oh, oh that, that shit hurt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. So core, in, core injury stuff. Can't even shoot the basketball. I watched the whole Creed series the last couple of days, and one of the exercises they did was hang Creed upside down and punch him in the oh, stomach yeah, yeah. Oh, for yeah. an hour straight. Boxers yeah. do do that. Let's do that. No. Nah. Let's do that. Oh, and they getting fucking hit in the chest. You've seen the third one, right? Yes. I went oh, to okay. One. You just seen it? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's a good movie. Though. I, cr- you I cried. cried in every single Creed movie. Oh, my Why? goodness. You I'm soft as hell. Guy, I am, too. Uh, I'm, I'm emotional super emotional, guy. but I ain't cry. I cried every single one of them. Bro, it's either the second or the no, third I'm just joking. one. What scene, though? What scenes? It's been out long enough where I could talk. Yeah. yeah. Hell, I mean, yeah. It's either, Anybody said you spoil it. Is it the second or the third one? Where he's on the mat, and I swear he looked like he about to be down. I think he looked at his— I think that's his, both. That's both? Yeah. He always had that damn yeah. moment on the mat yes. where it looks over, and it's just like the but most— But in three— It happened the first one. He like, <gasps> got back up, and he <laughs> yeah. started boxing again. In, in three, it pissed me off because it went into his own thing when he was fighting uh, Jonathan Majors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was like a— Yeah, it was like they own arena, and yeah. it was a, a jail thing. Exactly, kind of. yeah. The scene that made me cry was— um His, his wife, decent age. Tessa Thompson? That's I like, her name. I like Tessa Thompson a lot. Um, what is her name? F- Phyllis Rashad, right? From from um, the Cosby show? She was his mom in the, in yes, the movie. Yes, 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 yes. When she had that, that, that second stroke, 
and she's looking at him in his face, and she thought that was Apollo. Mm-hmm. Apollo, I met this kid that that uh, made me forgive you. Yeah, his name is Adonis. That oh, shit yeah. made me cry, bro. Yeah. It made because first of all, she's been our mom for as long forever. Yeah, between the Cosby Show and all the other shit. So when she passed away. That was enough for me. And then yeah. they got the Paul Bear that's scene. A, she, that, she, she's a, what a great If baby, I ever man. met her, that's mom. Yes. That's, yeah. And she's a, she used to be married to a mom, Rashad. That's how she got. Yes. She was. I, you're yes, right. From the yes. 80s. And they, yes, they, she was. They got divorced like four years Shout ago. Uh, Amara Rashad. Yeah, one of the goats. Man. My man. One of the my goats. main man. That's why I got. I used to say that when I was a kid. Wow. And my day used to be like. Uh, oh, the second movie that Where made me cry. that from? Like Omar Rashad. They have the baby. And of course, Tessa Thompson's character, she tells him in the first one. That she's losing her hearing and eventually yes. she will go deaf. Um, and they test the baby, and the baby doesn't react to the sound. Mm-hmm. And you get one single tear from Michael B. Jordan and Tessa. Yeah. As a, yeah. as a parent, like being deaf obviously is yeah. is something people live with and can live successful lives, great lives. But that was such a big thing for her throughout the entire movie that she was gonna lose her hearing. She's a fucking artist at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. So for the baby to come out and not have the hearing made me sad. Um, and then three. And then three was when when she passed away. The mom passed away. Mm-hmm. And the first one, I forget. I mean, yeah, the first one. I forget what made me. In the first one, um, that was so long ago. Either the third one, one too with John. They made John the major so damn hate bogus, him. bro. I hate him. Hate him. But but I understood him though. You hate him. That's why what I think did it was you good. Understand? In his mind, Michael B. Jordan left him for 18 years because he was sending the letters and mom wasn't giving it to him. So I took this charge for you. Right, right. And right. you wasn't there that for is me. True. That and is true. And now you, I'm seeing you live my life. Yeah, I wanted to be the best boxer in the world. That is true. So but, I understood him. Now, when he socked him at the beach, I can't get behind that part. Right. You know no, yeah, that part was great. <laughs> but like, I understand his motivation. That's yeah, all. no, for, for sure. But I, I'm okay. I understand that too. But it was just how he did the shit. Yeah, for sure. I can't believe he was. He had that old man fighting style. He was fighting dirty, bro, like yeah. not he old look man. like a boxer. Yeah, bro, he's like, a street guy. <laughs> yeah, this way he was holding his. He fist, was like, like dude, his arm was messed up, so he just kept focusing. But I also focusing. was mad at Michael B. Jordan too, because well, at the end of the day, hey man, I don't give a fuck how you feel. I'm a man. If I'm trying to. Tell you something and you ain't reciprocating. I'm not finna keep going out. I hate when movies do that. That's unrealistic. If I have a homie who felt that way and I'm trying to rekindle it and he ain't going, I right, then I right, cool. Bet you think I'm finna keep going and kissing you? I ain't finna kiss your ass. My fault that happened. I, it wasn't but that also, it wasn't even his fault. I bet. I it bet was, if yeah. he sat down and said, "Hey, not to put the blame on OG because she passed away two days later in the movie." Is my movie? Did he not try to? Was there not an understanding? He said that I, I wrote you, bro. And he's like, for real. I never got those letters. And he was like, it's the same house from when we were a kid. Yeah, she's still in the same house. But he didn't. Eventually, he found out yeah. that mom wasn't holding it. was too it. late by then, right? At that point. Yeah. But if, I bet if, because that's when he when he went to the beach. Yep. That's when he found out. And so he if he had, went to that beach and said, hey, my OG just gave me this box of 100 letters you sent. I never got these letters. It might have been better. Maybe. But Jonathan Major was already on way. Oh, he, he, yeah. he wasn't yeah. trying to. I ain't, I ain't trying to he hear shit. He was acting funny in yeah, front of company. Yeah, hired the dude to set. Hey, the movie is great, man. And they yeah. got another movie coming out. Michael but he's not going to be. Um, he's kind of directing it versus being. No, I'm not like, even talking about Creed. Oh, I'm talking about the director. Don, oh, um, what is his name? He did Black Panther. He did a lot of all the Creed movies. Um, cool, cooler, cooler. He means you ain't never seen Creed. No, yeah. You gotta get in, bro. bro. Get in tune, bro. Brian Coogler. They got another movie coming out that's set in the like. The old times are like, you know, slavery time. Mm-hmm. And I usually don't go for those type of movies, but I love Michael B. Jordan and I love him as a director that I'm here for. It comes out like March. You, you watch Creed and make you want to bring out the the speed bag and some boxing gloves. You Absolutely. Know, make you want to get in box. shape. You were shadow boxing. Yeah. Shadow box. For real. <laughs> Hold me. I was shadow boxing. Real shit, yeah. Hold me. I was shadow boxing. Yeah. No, you start damn well. That that is not going to translate. At all. You got to get your stance right. Michael B. Jordan's not a very great actor, though. He's I, great in montages when see. he's working out, but like when the emotional scene, he got the one when he did the one tier. That was great. Every other emotional scene, I ain't. Buying. Hey, on some real shit, the best scenes is the working out, flipping the tire. Yeah, bro, yeah. that shit gets Running. you hype, bro. Yeah, they had the J Cole song in the background. Yes. Yes. Oh yeah, yes. they did. And they like, referenced oh, Black man. Panther in that J Cole song, and he was in Black Panther as Killmonger. Did they? Because it was in a theater, and I all here. I'm like, Mom, this J, this yeah. J Cole. Yeah. They got the whole soundtrack. Got they do, movie. yeah. Ooh, what song is that off the... Oh, that's too much time on not NBA yeah, X Factor. Yeah, yeah, that's, but that's with our podcast. My next... Ryan Coogler. Thank you, Quab. My next uh, X Factor is the uh, the Pistons. Um, I think their X Factor is tank jobs. With the Nets and the Bulls in front of them, um, they would have to hope that both teams become sellers and drop in the standings, and that'll be their best way of um, getting into the play-in. 
unless they went on like some streak. But I think the way that they've been playing is what I expect from the Pistons. I like it. It's way different than last year, but it still kind of has them outside looking in. So I think that they would have to be anticipators of like, hey, the Nets are going to sell the rest of the second half and we can take advantage of that or whatever the Bulls are trying to do. They're so, almost a lock, bro, this early in the season. Where are they at? 10? Yeah, they're 11. Right, 11. But the same record with the Pacers and the in the Bulls. Like you mentioned, the Bulls should be sellers. In the theory, Nets. And the Nets should be sellers. It's really that well, least two 76 open spots, 76ers yeah. will come back up, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. Because then you're competing with the teams that are, might be competing. Like, but if you're competing with a Pacers team, you have to kind of be worried. The Pacers are a better team and at any moment could get their shit together. Sure. In but no, I'm, I'm still saying that the two teams that will drop out are the Bulls and the, the Nets. And the Nets, oh, okay. which means that two teams come Open in, up, which is yeah. 76ers and yeah. then the Detroit, yeah. if they just stay healthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I can see that. Because no one, none of these other teams are trying. The Raptors are not trying. What's his name? Um, Walter stepped on the end line or the sideline out of bounds at the end of their game last. I feel like they what they're doing, they sucking good. Yeah. <laughs> they in every single game, but end up not being able to close. And which Scotty Barnes hurt his ankle last night. Yes, he did. Which yeah. is great for you know what I seen the Raptors fans say? What? Emmanuel quickly. Like as a seller? Selling them? Or like where does he fit in all of this? Mm. Well, they gave him that, that bag. bag. That's the bag. first thought that came to my mind. I'm not saying it's how every Raptors fan feels. I just came across that. So. I didn't even I haven't watched him enough to even have an opinion on him this season. Because he ain't been playing. Yeah, he, he fell on his That's ass. what they saying. They're saying like he's Oh, they, he's still out from that one? I don't know if he's out from now. Because he, he came he's back. He's played with three RJ games. Bears. Um, oh, he's only played three. He's games? only played three so, games. Yeah, it has to be from when he fell on his ass. I thought he did that in the first game. No, he did that against the Lakers. We were watching that game yeah. on playback, and he Damn. has not played since then. Damn, dude. So what is the timeline with that? What's the <sighs> yeah. update? Can we get booty anything? hurt? Right <laughs> out indefinitely. I remember yeah. when we saw Isaiah Harnstein do that too on stream. Yes, bro. Yeah. And then Ooh, yes. Zach Collins took a nasty fall the other night too. I don't know if y'all saw that one. No. So I like didn't. his head. I thought he was gonna have a concussion or something. Oh shit. Um, and then now Scotty Barnes' foot. Yeah. This one say elbow injury for Emmanuel. Yes, yes, yes. Emmanuel quickly injury. We'll get more imaging on elbow. I knew I wasn't fucking tripping. So he hurt his elbow while. Well, that's crazy. Bo- so he's bumper. dealing with two injuries. A lot of people with their back and like tailbone injuries. Neck and back, man. All right, my next one is going to be the Thunder. Um, the easiest X fact I can give them is Chet. No, no, no. He's going. It's nothing to do with that. That <laughs> no booty, booty bumps. Oh, this is what you, that's you, my fault. Yeah. yeah I got to bring that I'm up. getting you that cream. It's I his elbow, it and Barnes is in a walking boot. Damn. Damn, Barnes is in a walking boot. But walking boot, boot well, doesn't tell, it. we've seen people in walking boots that still play two weeks later, so that's not. But he no, said, but I it, couldn't feel my foot, KB. Yes, oh, that's that's never, he said. Oh, he said, I couldn't feel my foot. Damn, Scotty. It's RJ Bear time. Uh, okay, um, Chet's hip. They're right now the best defense in basketball. Yes. And they still haven't been able to play a single minute of Isaiah Harden signing and Chet together. So like I said, he got hurt in the he played the first game 14 minutes. He got hurt. Right. He came back after missing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight games. He came back and played, played against the game. Clippers and the Lakers. Mm-hmm. And he has not played again. Oh, okay. You were Was right. that booty hurt the first game then that we watched together? That's what I'm saying. Oh. Against oh. The, played 14 against minutes. Against the, the pace, uh Pistons. It was the Pistons game. Yes. That's the one okay. we watched together. No, no, no. The, he played against the Cavs, and he played 14 yes. minutes in open, the very first game. That's played. what I meant. Yes, it was a Cavs game. It was a Cavs game. You're right. Okay. Um, stop hey, Stop making me think I'm crazy up here, man, because I know you don't be tapped in. You ain't even know who Jamison Battle was. Do you? <laughs> you still don't know. You still don't know? You should. Re- I wish you still had the notes of who he played for and just do oh, it Oh, we're going to do a TikTok of who he played for between them two with other players. Don't no, I, I love that. But I want you to do the last one that they did and see oh, if they the same, remember. I might still have my Please notes. Please check I and don't, see I if don't you do. Be throwing <laughs> Even them away. when you delete them, it should be in recently deleted. Uh, who he played for? What team does Isaac Jones play for? We should fight through these. Y'all already had these answers before. It's like retaking a quiz that you failed. And I'm not answering any of these because I went on a run in this, so I'm stepping out. Isaac Jones. He played for the Kings. He plays for the Kings. Jameson Battle. The Raptors. He plays for the Raptors. JT Thor. Actually, I he don't play know. For Thor plays, plays for the Cavs. for the Cavs. J.K. Simpson. Oh, the um, the 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 Charlotte Hornets. Yes, Patty Mills. KJ, you said J.K. Yes. Oh, did I? Sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, Trey Alexander. Actually, don't know. The Hawks. Incorrect. The uh, Nuggets. J.R.E. Oh, the Pelicans. Jeremiah Robinson. Oh, 
Colin Gillespie. I never call him that. What? <laughs> you say his full name every time. Oh, you probably just never said his name before. No, I have said his name before. I just never called him JRE. That's I can see you never saying that. You're right. The Grizzly. No. Who? Colin Gillespie. I actually don't know. The Suns. Yong Ji Chui. <laughs> don't don't, don't double don't down. You dare, now. Don't you dare say it. Don't you devil <laughs> down now. That's on you, D Mills. You know this one? No. <laughs> So you're going to fail this quiz twice? I'm doing it again next week. Y'all Brooklyn. are crazy. Yes. Brooklyn. Yes. Wendell Moore. Uh, plays for the the Pacers. No, Pistons. he doesn't. Pistons, man. All right, let me get back to OKC. Um, the only thing you can say about the OKC Thunder right now is that they still don't rebound well. That was the whole thing last year. And that's mostly because they've only had one center at a time. They're still running super small ball. J-Dub is doing his best. But at the end of the day, they're still a subpar rebounder team. So when Check comes back, that should make it better. They should always be able to have at least one center on the court at the, t- at the time. Um, they're leading the league in deflections. They have the most steals per game of any team since they started tracking it. Most deflections per game of any team since they started tracking it. The only thing that they need to do is rebound well. High turnover defensive team. Y'all know OKC. Chat get well soon. The deflections and stuff, it kind of makes up for Take your time Shout out Isaiah Hardison. Yeah, it's no, it's no rush, right? down it's too. No, we want you ready for April yeah. and so on. Get ready. Let's say get ready in March. So you can have a little ramp up time for the playoffs. Yes. Uh, another team, um, I got the Cavs. Um, I put Evan Mobley. Um, just because I think their offense is predicated on two guards when it comes playoff time. They're going to need somebody who can get them some easy ones when the – Shot quite ain't really falling that much. If ever Mobley could still show us what he's showing us in regular season, he could sometimes go get you an easy one at the rim sometimes. That could be a big help for this team when they come playoff time. If they could just get a big who can hold down the paint and be dominant. I, I don't mind that. I see. I I kind of look at Darius Garland, too, in terms of, like, when you talk, talk about playoff time. Yeah. I feel like he hasn't had the game where he meshed with Donovan Mitchell in the playoffs, and, like, they haven't looked like this team in the playoffs yet. Yeah, and but part of that is because he hasn't kind of like – he hasn't been him in the playoffs. True. They've looked so good in the regular season, them two as a backcourt, that I think they've figured it out together. Yeah, because they've never looked like this Yeah. either. So it, it gives just them – like, felt like one or the other, and now it's both. You know what I'm saying? Um, Evan Mobley, last episode, he had his 40-point yeah, explosion. Yeah, he was doing it while we were recording. Career high, man. And then he got injured the very next night, so get well soon. Um, Pacers. Their X factor is the trade deadline. Um, 25 games into the season, they're five games below 500, coming off of conference finals run. And it was, like I said earlier, it was an okay conversation to have when we were 10, 12 games in. But now it's kind of seeing like this is kind of who they're going to be this year. And I think luckily for them, they have enough assets and pieces to be able to rejuvenate this team in whatever direction they want to go in. I'll let y'all speculate or say what direction y'all would like to see. When you look at this, they're a confusing team because when you look at them on paper, it's hard to be like, they need this. Mm -hmm. But the production is showing that there's some type of shakeup that kind of needs to happen. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm curious to what route y'all will go. We know that you're good at this point guard with Halliburton and and McConnell. We know Miles Turner is your center right now. So Pascal is your four. So Mm -hmm. I guess it's a wing update. What type of wing would y'all look for, and how how much of a how much of a swing are you taking? Is this a home run? Are you looking for a single? I would uh, I would the gap key, for a double or triple. I would go back to that Jimmy Butler trade on some real stuff. Like I would entertain to see what I could do with that. Like how much are you willing to part with to get to Jimmy Butler at this point, knowing their Pacers roster? Uh, Aaron E. Smith. Honestly, I think it's easier to say just like who am I like? They're just staying on the road. Tyrese is not going every, anywhere, obviously. Pascal not going anywhere, obviously. And Miles and, Turner, uh, Miles Turner, it? Miles Turner probably. So Benedict Matherin ain't included in that. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm not even sure I, what the Heat would want. I'm just asking. I don't think he has to be included in that. No. Okay. Would you trade? These are really Walker? good players. What happened? Would you trade Jarris Walker? Yeah, at this point, yeah. At this point, yeah. I mean, we're talking to super hypotheticals. The way they make that trade happen is almost oh, impossible, a lot. bro. Without it being Miles Turner in here, we're talking about f- like five players, man. Yeah, because yeah. all the other guys we named, they're they making make, like nine or yeah. 11 million. So, Nimhard yeah, is probably, he's still on that original deal, I think. Yeah. 
So it's like Obi at 13, Neesmith at 11, McConnell at 9. I'm just naming them. Matherin at 7, yeah, Jarris at 6. $50 million. What about if you look at Ingram instead? Okay. But He's 40. 10, 10, 10 less. It's a little bit less. Yeah. Keep one of your players at least. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, why I don't yeah. think the the whole. I don't run think they do realistic. it because even at yeah, that, no. I, I like Jimmy Butler. So or Corey Kispert, or is that too low? I, don't I think, think that's that does too anything low. Either. Okay, um, I just for them for them to shift their identity this much. Cam Johnson, twenty two mil. That's more realistic. But that they, is more realistic. Them shifting their identity this much in one offseason is one of the biggest deterrents for them. Like, how did they go from the fastest team in the league, the number one offense of all time for the first half of the season, to being the 21st team in pace and 20th in offense? Like, I, I don't even know how you do that. Well, it starts with your point guard. How so? Because if he's having these up-and-down performances, your offense is going gonna, gonna to falter. But what does that have to do with the pace, though? The pace, yeah, but I'm just speaking of the offense dropping all the way to 21st makes sense because he isn't being the same player he was all season last year. So that makes sense. And then also you added Pascal Siakam, kind of a slower guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, when he can run, but also his offensive style is not a running gun type of style either. So your second best player also isn't fitting that mold either. Do you your think pace is going to drop too. It could be kind of just like teams know now too. You know, kind of like it, I think about how the Kings were. Like that shit, when they were like one of the fastest teams, one of the clutchest teams. like Grab people by surprise. You grab people by surprise, but once this is the next year, people know. Like on the scout, on one of the on the on the whiteboard, when the opposing team is trying to give out like the scout report, it's got to be an emphasis to get back on the damn Pacers. Like keep them. Hey, we want Tyrese trying to create in the half court. Mm-hmm. We know what he could do in the open floor pass. So I always think about that as like kind of like a a deterrent to some of these things where you see like we were the top seed or top team this year, but we kind of fell and we're not as good as we were. I think that's always something. Yeah, they're dealing with, I mean, everybody is, but not only having Nimhard for 11 games, mm-hmm. only having Neesmith for six has really hurt them as well. I can't say that's the reason. They're five games under, though. This is it's way deeper than that. Um, Seeming ed- inevitable that they will shake something up, though. That's 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 what I get from it. So that's why the deadline is their X factor. Uh, another team we got... Um Let's go. I got the 76ers as well. I think this one was, it was the obvious one was Paul George. Um, they acquired him in the offseason. And when you talk about this team, also, it's not Paul George. They also kind of have to be perfect. Like they damn near, they don't really have much wiggle room and like falling more in the standings or either losing more games. Luckily, we did. Paul talk George about, there, man. They need, they need the whole team to be there. No, yeah. But I yeah. think also, when you're talking about getting the Oh, where that's, they need that's to be, what we got the goalpost now, being there for yeah. Paul George. Not the tw- I mean, for the tw- 76- points on 13 shots. No, for the 76ers, because <laughs> your best talking. player is absent. I think you're no, all no, start- he's back. He scored 30 this night. No, no, that, he, that he, was his game. He looked like Joel Embiid. He's back, <laughs> but he hasn't been back. Yeah. yeah. He said th- back to back 30 point games, though. They just happened two weeks apart. Without Joel Embiid <laughs> on that court, <laughs> it's, this it's team don't mess. be standing a chance yes. a lot of times. So, yes. like, hey, if it comes down shit. to it, MVP shit. If they're pushing it and they're looking like, man, we on the. Tams, they're like they're kind of pushing the play in. Do you think Joel starts playing back to backs if they need it? They're gonna be fine. There's no world they don't make the playoffs, in my opinion. Too many teams in front of them ain't trying to make. There's it. at least yeah. like four, five teams that. I mean, the Bulls literally do not want to win. They don't want to get that pick. Bulls, Bulls fans don't want to win. The rest, the front office, that's a whole different question. But yeah, making the playoffs Nets is the goalpost for this team, though. That's why them being talk about it, Derek. Talk that, about that it. sixteen game series is what they really care about. And then you essentially putting yourself back into the position you was last year, where you're going to be in the, the top dogs either, early. No. That's yeah. just not something you want to go through again, especially when you're talking about having to play the Celtics or the Cavs mm-hmm. in the first round, or the Knicks, the Bucks. The Bucks Ooh, are don't let higher. it be the Knicks. Like that's going to be crazy. Oh, if it's the Knicks again, that's going to be. Well, I ooh, bet their, their I bet their argument will be we had to go through those teams anyway. Not necessarily. Why every time you look right at Pierre to see what he gonna say? I feel like he look at you. I, oh, oh, no, no, no. Everything that That's I crazy because I feel like he look at you <laughs> to think of everything. So he, I thought he was gonna respond. I, it wasn't. Okay. okay, I did respond. Well, they they are three and one in their last four, so they starting to do it. 
Hey, let's put some money some, on it. They, they, they don't make the Easter Conference Finals. <laughs> Easter Conference. <laughs> That's heavily in your favor. K- right. KB sounding like he believed. No, I'm just saying, I, you, they're looking better as of recent. If you are a one seed, mm-hmm. your first round matchup is an eight, so you're not going to have to go against one of those guys. But when Derek's point is, you are, and when you're in a play in, you guaranteed to have to go through every single body. The benefit of being a top team is you get to play against a, a Pistons potentially first, versus you but starting I, I off do with think the Cavs. That they're- and then you go to Celtics. Uh, I, I promise if we ask the Cavs or the Celtics who would they rather see in the playoff series, the 76ers or the Detroit Pistons, they're going to take the Detroit Pistons. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. Hell yeah. Why would I want to go against Maxi, Paul, George, and Joel? And I that's the point, I, though. <laughs> and I guarantee if I flip the question on the Sixers, they're going to say they'd rather go against the Detroit Pistons instead of the Cavs. It's just unlikely. Some, I'm, I'm, it's just not going to happen. Let um, me uh, like throw the Lakers finals. out there. Um I think their X factor is honestly just kind of on Rob Palenka at this point. I think a lot of the stuff on the court it just is what it is at this point. I don't think we're expecting D'Lo to just turn into some crazy player. Same thing with, like, Dalton uh, Dalton Connect during his rookie year. Also, like, a lot of this stuff has to deal kind of, like, off the court of what we bring in, and that goes on Rob Palenka and see what he can kind of just deal do with this roster at this point. Yeah, yeah I'm very interested because those three first-round picks can get y'all something. Very interested to see what he does with them. Or if he keeps them at this point. It's not if out he, of our possibility. Yeah. If he sits on them, then that pretty much means that y'all y'all just if set what y'all got. If he sits on them, and that just sounds weird too, but like if he just holds on to the draft picks, like we're still gonna win games with LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Like But y'all probably gonna this be is a like do we just ride it out until like the contracts are kinda over or like LeBron is gone LeBron ends up retiring. Do we just ride it out? Sitting on question him and for riding me. out is crazy. Like, oh, that is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just go to the next team. Um, New York Knicks. Talk, talk. Mikael Bridges finding that defensive fire again. Because offensively, last five games, he's 21 points per game, three rebounds, th- four assists, um, 45% from the field. Or 45% from three, sorry, 65% from the field. The offense has been great again. The, the hitch he is in the jump shot don't matter. 45% in this five-game sample size. The question is, can he get back to being defensively minded? And I don't think they need him. I mean, they would take him being an all-defensive caliber mm-hmm. player, but I don't think they need him to do that. They just need him not to be as bad as he has been. And I didn't get to watch their game versus the Raptors. Um, I got some tweets saying that McHale's defense looked good in that one. I didn't, I didn't watch that game, so I, I can't speak on it. The only thing I can speak on is the previous games before that. But obviously he hasn't been as good defensively as we know him to be. And now that the offense is shifting, maybe that means that the defensive shift because the team is already really good. It's just a matter of can they hang their hat on the defensive side of the ball more because um, the offense is best in the league good. I like that. Timberwolves, their X factor, and they have a few. From a player perspective, I think Nikhil Alexander-Walker has been phenomenal for them. Um, but I, I don't get the same feel from this team as last year. And so my X factor for them is really the offseason, really trying to understand how they're going to pivot and restructure this team because I don't see Julius Randle as the long-term fit. Do y'all, by the way? No. I don't know. Like, when I think about Julius Randle, I, I don't know what to, like, think. What is the next step for or place for him? I don't, yeah, there's, a, there's a group of players that I think that are, like, not solidified ones. But they're like, good, though. But they're super good <laughs> and it's just, like, <laughs> like DeMar DeRozan, the Jimmy Butler, like Julius Randle, they're really hard to move around just because, like, you got to find a real good spot for them or just, like, they're, like, they're hard players to fit. They need the perfect situation. They're like the last of a dying breed. Yeah. They're, those guys, all those guys you mentioned are low-frequency three-point shooters. Mm-hmm. That's the, they're the last of a dying breed. Yeah. And you're not putting the ball in their hands because they ain't yeah. that damn dynamic to where it's But like, they also kind of need the ball because well, they, they the steal Rosen it. Can the be, Rosen can yeah, do that yeah. for you, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I just think, like, I look at this team. I'm still excited. I still like them. I still enjoy watching them. But coming off of last year and being in this year of what I've gotten, even, they're 4-1 and one in their last five. Um, I, just, I just continue to look at this team. And as a guy that not necessarily is a Timberwolves fan – but I'm just like, man, I cannot wait to, like, actually see what the result of this is going to be. I want them to get back to having an actual team and knowing this is what it is. And um, I'm curious as to how they're going to maneuver because Dante DiVincenzo hasn't been the guy that they thought they were getting. Julius Randle has always been this odd fit. But some games it looks really well. Some games you have the Rudy Gobert incident. Um, Gobert. 
I, I, I love the supporting cast that they have, though. I love Nikhil off that bench. I love uh, Nas Reed. I think Rudy McDaniels with Ant is nice, but I'm just I'm very anxious to see them get back to a. a, a it just feels kind of like this is a temporary year. That's kind of the vibe I be. Well, getting. they made the trade, and the first thing they talked about was flexibility for the future. Yes. That don't make you really excited if you're a fan. If we went to the conference finals, you're talking about future right now, mm-hmm. not the now. And that kind of puts me where my mind is. Like, I'll try to watch, and I'm, I'm loving what I'm getting from Nikhil, 50-40, n- far from 90. <laughs> um, Nas Reed is always my guy. He was 50-40-90, I think. I think he fell off a little bit with the threes. But um, I ain't heard that one yet, 50-40, far from 90. You know, it's <laughs> probably a couple guys that meet that. Not really, because you think about it, usually if you can hit a three-pointer, you, you can make a free throw. Money at the free throw line. 50 40, not awesome, He likes 73% at the free throw line, Nikhil, but he's 50 40. <laughs> That's actually a crazy term. I wonder how many people fit that term. I re- would you rather that or would you rather be the guy who is 50 40, 88? That always pissed me off because it's like you right there. Yeah. Just make oh, six yeah, more free throws. I'd right rather there. be right there. Missing, who missed? Somebody in the last couple of years missed it by like 0.4 free throw percentage. Has to be. A, yeah, they don't a round it up or something. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. That's such an exclusive class. We're not rounding. You yeah. got to hit the marks, man. But, yeah, Nikhil is shooting 51% from the field, 46% from three, and 73% from the free throw line. Let me see. Near. 1.3 attempts. 40, 90 club. They're going to see all the people that got skipped out. Who Wait, who got the Spurs? Um, I have the Spurs, I believe. Get yeah. to the Spurs right now. I have or the else. Spurs. He's telling you what to do. Ooh. I put uh, Devin Vassell and Keldon Johnson just obviously to keep hooping and doing their thing. The Vic, obviously, when Vic is on the court, they're a, like they have the chance to win damn near any game with the defense he provides and like the X factor that he is. But with him missing a couple games, they still need that spark if they're going to try to make the plan or anything like that. So I put Devin Vassell and Kelvin Johnson to hold it down as the, I guess, vets of this kind of team. I think there's also the question Chris of. Paul, a vet. Harrison Barnes. <laughs> I'm looking at them to be a little bit poor, poor productive. Chris Paul been doing his thing, by the way. So I ain't worried about him. I also think it's the X factor of what you're doing with those picks if you are going to. Love all of that, brother. Congratulations to my GOAT, Christopher Emmanuel Paul, becoming second all-time in assists total, man. Oh, that's why you wanted him to get to of it? Of course. I'll, I wanted to show my love to my GOAT, Chris Paul. You've what, seen what they did with the ball, right? Oh, I absolutely love it. They, they, uh, they gave him a ball with the name of every single player that he assisted on, um, and it was over 100 and something people. Frank Kaminsky was on there. Yeah, uh, they say Saban, Saban who's, Saban who's your favorite connection he's had? Blake, Blake Griffin. Griffin. I'm Tyson Chandler. Blake Griffin. You see, Charles. A thousand of those assists went to Blake Griffin himself. And a they thousand don't like each other, huh? Charles no, Basie no, missed Blake out Griffin on was it. in that video. Oh, he was he? They did like a tribute for like random. It was like Gennaro Pargo. It was Dave Page who Stoyakovich. Who like each other from the Clippers? Um, Does DeAndre Jordan and Blake get along, right? I, I don't know. I don't know. I just think they don't like the Clippers. Ah. Uh. <laughs> But you no, know, they did a little tribute video of some of the people I got that a he question. got assist with. Who's in that Paul George video we watched this morning? Jamal Crawford. Jamal Crawford, Jamal Crawford said that Blake, the Blake and Chris Paul thing didn't make sense to him because he said he was in locker rooms with them and they've never argued or gone at each other. That's or, why I said. That's why not, I said that. Oh but yeah. I, I, they probably could just be like a non-confrontational when we should be a little bit confrontational because we're teammates and we should iron things out. You know, his year with um, Steph Curry, he had 51 assists to Steph Curry. He's got 50 assists to women Yama already. They're 20 yeah. games into their career together. I would have 50 assists with him. Yeah. Stop stop, cut it out. Let me ask you this, though. All Chris Paul, I love you, man. For all of y'all. I love you too, Chris. Um, he even said, I'm sorry. I just got, I just got to finish this thing. lesson. Um, he gave a little speech where he was super emotional. Um, he said, I know I could be, this is him tearing up. I know I could be um, kind of a jackass on the court, but I swear it's just because I love this game. And I pray that y'all get to play the game as long as I did. Or I do. That's what Jamal Crawford told Paul. Oh, that's so beautiful, That's what Jamal Crawford told Paul George. And that's why that kind of rubbed me the wrong way seeing Paul George be that way. Because it's like, Chris don't mean, like, he was telling, like, and, you know, I got into it with Chris. You see, y'all saw the video. You saying I I had to hit Chris in his mouth because he hit me. But it's like, he's just trying to win. He's just a basketball guy. And, like, y'all can get pet. And, like, Paul George, um, no, I just, I just, it just hear what it is, man, at this point, man. Is it weird that I've never met Chris Paul yet? No, all I of think the players so. that I've met or you don't be to. having motion. You're right. I need to step my. You game need to. On. We need to get you in a class with Motion Man Mari. Right. Yeah. 
True, Get true. your emotion up. You know who Mari looks like? No, no. Who? You, you Jacoby know what? Walter. You know, you, he yes, kind of does. does. <laughs> but you know why you piss me off? What's time? Because you can have motion, but you choose to not have it. Oh, yeah, I don't. When we go to the stuff like at All-Star Weekend and the events at Adidas, I'll be having to drag y'all. And even then, I don't you get, like to y'all get there stuff. and be like the first one. Me and my eight. This 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 KB line to let you know he's leaving. Anybody coming in my Uber with me? <laughs> 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 Mike, you ride with me? Y'all Mike, be, Mike definitely will leave with KB immediately. I'll be like, all right. You do, breaks, buddy. But I just don't be liking to be outside. I don't but like that's being outside. A, that's a chance to meet the Chris Paul in the proper way to meet him. Because yeah. I hate meeting players in passing. You got to meet him at that party. DeRozan, be like this, gone. But in the, the joint, you could, you know. Be like, what you, what you want, CP? He's sipping on this low boat over here. <laughs> Bro, you, I swear, I promise you, if you talk to a player like you know him, he's just going to go with it because they meet <laughs> too many people. That's my secret. Now, it is some people that are mega stars, but I'm like, I'm not going to act like I know, bro. Aubrey! Aubrey, what's good, Aubrey? Dre going to be like, what the, f- what the fuck like, Nobody's doing that but Anwar. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. Anwar sat there and told me a plan to be a part of Drake's entourage. Yeah. Ain't no way you, 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 oh, my you God. Can't, you that can't say. Crazy. Yes, I remember yes, that. You it can't was so say cool. that, like, you making a plan. And it's as you making the yeah. you making a plan, you say, "Man, I'm gonna play it cool when I see him." Yeah, you yeah, can't just no way. you can't just say that for yourself. And, and as just another think grown be man, like why do you want to be a part of another? You're 26. Man's <laughs> now listen, I will say this: if you have somebody that you, if we all together, and let's just say Mike pop off as a rapper for whatever, he make a hit, and it, we're technically a part of his entourage. But it's just what it became. It's not like. Man, I want to be a part of an entourage. You see, when they all walk in the club together, I want to be seventh in the line. <laughs> it's like it just gotta happen. Versus being like, that's what you want, and that's why I remember that story. Cause I'm like, bro, you plot don't be into somebody's entourage. It was like some he real had, life. But TV he real shit, life had it planned out though. Yeah, yeah. like we step didn't go into step. detail. No, like, he was even... literally giving us verbatim yeah. steps. Yeah, and it's... I met Chubbs. I'm, okay, this is the last story that we get back. <laughs> we was in New York, me and Flex, we had the Drake 21 Savage thing. And we didn't meet Drake. It's kind of like Atlanta. We're like, what was his girl? Wasn't his girl going to a Drake party and she thought she was going to meet Drake or something like that in the Donald Glover show? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That. She thought she was going to meet, yeah. yeah. I know what you're talking about. So it was like, I didn't think we was going to meet Drake. But then once we start being around Chubbs, I'm like, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> Drake got to be, you know? So I'm all of this is happening. That's the same night you're at the Bubble Guts. Yes. You remember that? <laughs> have you seen that episode that, of yeah. Atlanta? No. Uh-uh. Oh, yeah. That's I feel the like perfect, you have seen I mean, that. That's that's the perfect thing. I don't remember it. That's when we all watched. He had to have seen that. Okay. That's like season yeah, that's, one. Season that's Zazie Beats. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She, that's where she did a whole night talking about, like, I'm trying to meet Drake. I'm trying to meet Drake. And she... He's never actually there. It sounds vague. I haven't watched it in years. So though. the same kind of thing is happening to me. I'm I'm not thinking we're going to meet him though. But like the the more at one point we go into this room in Madison Square Garden, his dad and his family is in there, and I'm like, oh, the Drake probably finna pop out at any time. Long story short, he never gets there. But I'm thinking this because I'm like, the moment this happens, I'm I'm have I'm telling Anwar. Never happens. I end up telling Anwar though. Like, um, cause we had seen Chubbs once and then we seen Chubbs again. And then Chubbs is like telling us to come to this after party. We was, we was walking slow and we got stopped by security. They was like, no, 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 no. Cause it's like a access thing. And Chubbs turned around like, no, they were me type shit. And me, me mm-hmm. and me and Flair was like, e, like, yeah, it's a real one. Cause he definitely could have just walked off on our ass. So then that's what made me text him on work. Cause I'm like, man, now Chubbs, he going all out of his way. It's like, Hey man, I just linked up with your boy Chubb. Anwar, who has never met Chubbs in his life, replies and says, yeah, that's a real blank. That's a real end. And I looked at my phone, and I closed it and put it back in my pocket. Like, <laughs> why are you speaking like you have a relationship with him? He's a real one. I, I don't talk about people in that way that I don't know. I can't yeah. give nobody the real one if I don't know him, but... That's how my boy. That's the one. That's people that saying uh, Drake happy birthday, but not like they cousin or something like that. That's that's (laughs) nuts. That's nuts. That is nuts. Um, But yeah, shout out to Caitlin Clark, Time Athlete of the Year. Does that feel accurate? Shout out Double C. I don't know who's had a bigger impact. Me either. But I'm thinking like 
somebody to maybe rival somebody it. from the Olympics. Oh, true. I don't, but I don't know which sport would have been it. Is that gonna be Noah Noah Lyles, right? Uh, it, not for me. I'm not sure. So maybe yeah. Y'all done with the teams? Anybody? No, I still, got, no. I still got. I still got. I still got some. I could. Uh, one that I had was the Kings. I think it's honestly on the shooters, King and Murray and Kevin Herter. They just haven't been shooting the like how they were last year, and I think it's part of the reason why their offense just hasn't been as good, especially with having like two damn near three guys that's been dominating mid range jumpers and just the paint. I mean, even Sabonis is trying to take a step out this year to expand the range, and I also think it's also on Mike Brown to kind of just get this team back like special again. I think for all the talent that they have, they're kind of again. I'm gonna keep using that word mid. They just don't seem like they're that good. Call them mid for being a mid-range team. Yep. <laughs> they shoot so many mids. Like cash money mid. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's crazy. So many. It's too many. But you got to tell your center to step out and start hitting them. This crazy. He'll do it. He will. He'd be, he be hit more than I thought it, or think he would. Uh, my next team is the Warriors. I think their biggest X factor is Mike Dunleavy. It was all cool and Junior. kumbaya, Junior. It was all good and kumbaya when you brought in these players and so much depth that we're running a 12 to 13 man rotation. That shit is dead now. It is time for you to pick up the phone and be a general manager and make some moves. Steph Curry ain't getting no younger. We're seeing some of the things that we saw Steph Curry be able to do all the time. It's not happening all the time. We only got a limited amount of time left. And in my mind, there is only one timeline, and that's the Steph Curry timeline. Pick up that damn phone. Go get him some help, please. Who would you like to see or y'all? Zach Levine. Me too. I did it in my Bulls uh, series. It just then. don't make sense for them they financially. Went crazy. But it's like yeah. it. Mm. They were so good after I made that trade. Because like they can't do that there without giving up Wiggins. Yes. Right? So it's no. Yeah, I got back Wiggins. Oh, you got back. Oh. Yeah, and if I'm the Warriors, I might as well just keep Wiggins. Yeah. That I mean, really makes sense for them. Now, I keep going. Uh, Miami Heat. Well, this is before I made this last night before the Jimmy Butler news came out. Um, but I think Jimmy Butler's effort level. Um, and his involvement in the offense is the biggest X fact for them because over the last couple of days, he's really been looking closer to the version of him that we're used to where there were games and halves at a time where he was disengaged offensively. And now he's really into the action. Tyler Hero is still like the all-star on the team and everything. But having Jimmy Butler be close to the version of him that you expect obviously has shifted some things. They've been scoring a bunch off their offensive look. Offense looks a lot better over the last two weeks. And their defense. Points in I'm saying the defense is back to looking decent too. And I think a lot of that is Jimmy Lakers. coming back from his defense or his uh, his injury and looking okay. Yeah, uh, I, I I like that because I think you know what I really like. I like the Tyler Hero Bam pick and roll. Feels like it always generates something good. Even though Bam is shooting what the league lowest at, at the, the rim. rim or something like it's that, it's starting to get better. <laughs> he was so much in the hole that he might have that title for some time before. Yeah. Well, break. his issue was he was damn. He was tipping the ball at the rim a hundred times, and I'm just like, bro. Just Did y'all see that clip of him in Terry Rozier? Yes. Hey man, I almost got my double O. You already got yours. Let me get my rebound. He said, "You yeah. keep messing up fucking rebounds." Oh no, that's a real thing. The hot mic picked that up when they were arguing about who gets the rebound. <laughs> I be wondering if players do that when they be like, "Man, I've got like Bron two two rebounds away. Like, yeah. let me go in here and get oh, these." Bron gonna get hit. So yeah. after you wondered it, mm-hmm. what conclusion did you come up with? He gonna get the yes. rebound. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> Certain, I feel like as a guard though, you should just let the big get the board anyway. He's, he but nine, Terry Rozier is, I don't often, I don't do this often as a guard, and I somehow got nine. You already got your double double. Let me get mine. He's got 18 tr- double doubles in his career, Terry Rozier. Most Did of them are assists, right? Not rebounds. Um, yes, most of them are assists. I don't, I don't like when they be like that, though. That reminded me of that one where Kemba got that triple double. No, they, that's way different. That, they, no, they, were way they were intense. They were that intense. Yeah, that's like way different than with Terry Rozier. Terry Rozier is in a heart of the game. He's yeah, trying. Man. He's getting it. Kemba think there was a possession where the ball was bouncing on the floor and they were boxing and out. And he was like, damn. To, get it, get it, get it. <laughs> hey, bro, we got to take that triple double off his <laughs> And it happened on Christmas bro. with everybody watching, yeah. too. Is that work? No, Latrell Speedwell got the worst one. Which one was the Where he he missed Tried a to shot throw it. on the on his own rim to get the rebound. And it didn't even it didn't count. count. Still. They didn't count it. Like, damn, bro. Can you make it any more obvious? <laughs> the answer was no, you couldn't. That's the most obvious that you could do. Shout out <laughs> to them for being technical, because technically, could have got a rebound, but they was like, no, we've been overly technical. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, Drummond admitted that he misses on purpose sometimes. Stupidest thing you could ever I do. I was going to say, I don't even know why you Stupidest admit Stupidest thing you could ever do. Stop talking. Some people don't need to be interviewed and talking. Uh, Shout out to Drew. Meanwhile, bro. come on my show when I, when I say. <laughs> How many teams you got left? Uh, I got three teams left. I two got teams one. Left. I got two, I believe. We didn't do the Suns, right? We have not done Suns. Uh, I put down Bradley Bill just with Kevin Durant. When he's out, 
This team looks drastically like different from him in the lineup. They don't have many room to make. Uh, they don't have much. Is he in the Julius Randle category to you? I think only because oh, of the contract. Of the okay. I think well, it's only be because worse. of the contract. Who? Bradley Beal. Oh, talk to me. I'm not saying you're wrong. Just because his right. contract is much bigger and it's not even. Julius Randle's is about to be. So old. When, don't forget the no trade clause yeah, that they gave. The when Bradley, if Bra- what if okay, what if Bradley Beal made thirty million dollars? It would be a lot better. Okay. Like significantly better. Because he's not having a bad year at all by any no. means. But he's also not fifty plus million dollars good either. Because it puts your team in such a yeah. Pigeon you're in hole. a financial chokehold. Now I have no wiggle room, and I'm pretty sure they're a second apron. Why is his nickname Dr. Dre? Bradley Beal? Beal? Mm-hmm. I have no idea. Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre is on this big. Big Panda, real deal makes sense. Brad makes sense. Blue Magic, few of those I've never heard before. You said black. What was the panda? Big Panda. Big Panda. Yeah. Who be coming up with these nicknames? I don't know, but they need to figure it out. Cause they not. Uh, I remember when Pierre knew um, Zach Levine's name was Young Hollywood. Hollywood. Zach Levine was like, "How you know that?" I'm a fan. Yeah, I'm gonna miss Zach when he gets traded, man. What you mean? If um, he gets traded. There's a world where he just stays for the next two years. I'm not living in that world, though. <laughs> uh, for his sake. Don't he deserve to go play somewhere for have at least one more playoff series in his life? He can, even after his contract. Oh, Washington, thank you, um, team. Watch the Wizards call Bradley Beal Big Panda because he eats so much. That's that, that's, that's exactly why he, he left. <laughs> 2014. That Shout out to the Omaha name. team. That weak ass name. He didn't even have a, a lineup in this picture. That God weak damn, bro. Weak ass name. So it had to be a lot of Panda Express, I hope. Well, no, I he think just pan- eat bamboo. Pandas just eat a lot because they have such a high metabolism that they kind of just have to keep eating. Is that why they call you Boo Boo? <laughs> no. They call me Boo. Right. Uh, Don't add that extra one. Uh, why do they call you Boo? Because you scary looking like a ghost. I actually Boop. don't know why they call me Boo. <laughs> <laughs> it just became his nickname. <laughs> uh, to- Toronto Raptors. Um, Star J. Barrett's ascendance. Like, what, what do we feel like is the ceiling of R.J. Barrett? I have no idea now. I literally <laughs> don't. I don't. Yeah. He's like I guess the Knicks, he was making threes. He was doing everything. He's playmaking. Bro, he wanted to bust. He wanted to he wanted bust y'all. So hey, <laughs> hey, R.J. Barrett is getting his moment this year. He's getting his moment this year. He I damn it don't want to play them again. Ass so bad, man. Bro. He wanted that, and he had his quote before the game. It was like, man, I knew I was getting traded. You know when they gonna trade, they start treating you different. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I didn't even see that. People start treating you different. Because we, we feel pretty good about Scotty Barnes being a perennial All Star type of talent. Yeah, it looks like they got two guys that could maybe right. Yeah. And I, I'm not gonna lie, I've always loved R.J. Barrett. I've liked his game. I wanted to see some growth. But when that trade happened, I was really excited for Toronto for Emmanuel quickly. And I mm-hmm. felt that was going to be a good pairing with Scotty. And whatever you got from RJ was a plus. Now, Might be I was wrong. Yeah. It's flipped. RJ yeah. Baird is the the match here with Grady Dick as well. And hey, whatever you get from quickly, I get it. I guess at this point, is whatever you get from quickly. Mm-hmm. Evaluated, evaluated it wrong. So boom. Has RJ and, been paid? and huh? Has RJ been paid? Yeah. He's okay. still on the deal. Yeah. They suck. So they have that and might be having a top 10 pick. Mm-hmm. Seventh overall, sixth overall pick. Man, which would get them. I'm trying to think who in the draft they could get. They could get my guy from Duke. Um, I'm talking about seventh overall pick. Right now they're projecting number four. Four? Four would get them. Damn, would they take Igor? Mm-mm. You, who else would you take? You're not taking Trey Johnson when you got Grady Dick. Mm-mm. Um, no, Dylan Harper is not going to be there. I think four. he. I think he's going top three, arguably two. Another reason why the Hornets and my and my rebuild, the Hornets got the second pick. That's Dylan Who Harper. Take, oh, you took Dylan. So it's like, what happens with Lamelo? Yeah, not that they couldn't they exist in any way, but if you're getting that much younger at that position, you might as well take it. You man. might as well because you're gonna have hella draft picks or something yeah. you bringing in. So, Lamelo gonna get you something. Let me see what the mock what well, mock got him. I'm just interested in the Raptors. You know what I'm saying? They got yeah. a lot, but got a little. Mm-hmm. While we're here, though, at least they have three core guys. And yeah. Quickly, RJ and Scotty. Like, at least you have that. I'm interested. They got they... Igor projected there. I, 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 I... Or Ye- Jaeger. I'm sorry. That's how you pronounce it. Um, they do say Jaeger. Um, but um, 
or is it Ager? Well, Brock has a heard Jaeger. I like the Jaeger. I've heard it. It's close to Jaeger Meister. Um, you an anime guy? My anime guy? Yeah. yeah. I'm interested That's to see true. what they're going to get for Bruce Brown. They got Attack Jacoby Walter as well. Like Not the anime, Raptors. but Anna May. You know what I mean? Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what you mean, but. Do you remember when John typed that anime is anime? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, literally, like, two first names, anime. Yeah. Golly. <laughs> All right, I got one more team. Um, Their last team is the Houston Rockets. I, th- I th- honestly do think their biggest X factor is their clutch, crunch offense. Because mm-hmm. that's the only thing I really worry about when it comes to the postseason for them. I know that that defense is going to translate to the postseason. It's just a matter of do the way they kind of run their their offense in the clutch, which in a lot of cases is like let Al Prince Shingoon be the cooker of whatever the hell they trying to make. Freddy. Um, I just don't know how how much that translate in the postseason. Because right now the Rockets are one of those teams that like the postseason is a not a definite. That's a definite, but like that's a postseason team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're not we- we're not questioning if they're gonna make the jump. They make the jump. So now we try to figure out from what they have what is a staple, and I think you find that out in the postseason. I mean, last year they did have a very really good. Clutch offense. I mean, it was a lot of it was predicated around Fred and um, Shingoon. Mm-hmm. So I guess in a way, I think if Fred, once Fred really gets back to being the Fred he was last year, generally speaking, I think their clutch time offense will be significantly better. We'll see. We'll see. Because he does have his moment still. Yeah, yeah. He had what? He like had OKC. Okay, he hit that big ass shot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I also, I think this is the last last team for me. I had the Hornets. Been a super rough year for them. I think they had a couple bright spots when Lamelo and Brandon and Brandon Miller were in the lineup, but since Lamelo went down, it's kind of just like it's kind of rolling the ball out there with four other guys and Brandon Miller. So it, it's tough for them. Uh, I have Lamelo because I mean I feel like he's just the brightest spot on the team besides Brandon Miller at this point. Yeah, I can see that. Like uh, once he comes back, I have the hopes that they could honestly be one of them teams that's trying to get the Pistons out. That I think it was a, we were talking about the Pistons, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. They could be a team that's trying to challenge the Pistons for that spot. They're kind of stinky, though. It's a little bit stinky. I mean, they're we're talking about the ten spot here. It's yeah, not like we're talking about the four. Sure, sure. The last uh, team that I have is the Blazers. It's really about how much va- – the X factor is the value of the what assets. they can – Yep. Talked about Robert Williams, Jeremy Grant, Anthony Simons. I um, think that's, that's really the main thing. Um, and then pivoting into – that that potential lineup can be real fun. You got Scoot, Shaden, Tamari Kamara, Denny, uh, Denny, and then Donovan Klingon. That's real decent for you. That's a good young fun star lineup. I agree. Something that KB is completely against. Yeah, good fun. He's he's against it when it's done wrong. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I got team, Donovan Klingon. You can't do anything wrong with Donovan. That Klingen. team do sound like it's gonna suck, but I um, get you though. I get your drift. I, uh, I had a few teams left, actually. Oh, shit. Okay, we listed. I had the Nuggets. I had the obvious one. Actually, surprised at this point that he has to be on here is Jamal Murray. Um, what are we going to get from Jamal Murray? I don't know. It's been a rough six to eight months for him right now. Yeah. Uh, so, unfortunately, we did. When he's at the peak of his powers, this team wins the championship. Or they even look like a team that is, like, the favorite to win the championship. So, Unfortunately, without him being there, I don't know if they can win a championship without Jamal Murray being his peak version. Did y'all see um, Aaron Gordon try to call that, like, the little huddle during yeah. the game? Mm-mm. And Jamal Murray, like, went across half court and, like, didn't come to the huddle? He, basically, like, they they were down. What game was this? They were down or whatever, and Aaron Gordon tries to game? call the— no, It wasn't he, that Wizards they game. They playing the Wizards game. Aaron Gordon calls the huddle, and he's like, you know, oh, right. come here, let's call the huddle, whatever. Nobody goes to the huddle, and he's just like— Forget it at this no, point. No, I think I think some people tried, but then Jamal Murray just walked away. And like, that was enough for other people to walk yeah. away? And they were just like, yeah, forget it at this point. Who and did they I, beat after the Wizards? They just um, the beat Hawks. the Hawks. Yeah, they, they lost to the they Wizards. Ass. Destroyed the Hawks. And that they was another game. He did there at 50. Yeah. Jokic was, he, yeah, that game. That Wizards, Wizards game was crazy. I only watched the first half of I it. I kept feeling like, like Nuggets going to win this game. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Nuggets going to win this game. It was so many people. <laughs> Jordan Poole had his own runs. Johnny Davis had his own little run mm-hmm. in that game. Jordan Poole it's, having a good year, man. No, Jordan Poole is having a good – shout out to Jordan Poole for bouncing back, man. Mm-hmm. It took him – that last year, I think it was a shock to him of how hard it is to be a starting point guard in the league. Took him a little bit to adjust to it. When you play behind Steph Curry, Draymond, Clay Thompson, Wiggins, Steve Kerr, a system – it's no pressure, really. They gave you a green light to come in and just be the spark plug. Then he had to come in and Washington be the point guard 
which is a, the hardest position to adjust to. And I think this year he's doing a good job at it. I agree. <laughs> you got a last scene? That was I watched that game, but I watched it the day after. That was my first Wizards game I watched in Some of the watched Nuggets Wizards? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I made a video about the Nuggets, so I had to watch that game. Yeah, it was part of the broadcast. It was you good and saying that, like, they were up, like, 10, 15, and Jokic went down to the – you like uh, the broadcast? No, nah, but it was okay. just on. Yeah, same. Um, and Drew Gooden was saying that, like, man, hopefully it gets to a point where it stays at, like, 10, 15. Uh, Coach Malone don't even put Jokic back in because they had a back-to-back mm-hmm. where they played the Hawks the next day. So they were just hoping that Jokic yeah. – they knew that was the only person that could save the day. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, all the rest of the Nuggets were not a crumb that night. It, this is actually kind of brilliant by Adam Silver, though, because some teams don't play their next game until Friday. Bro, you know, it's out. Yeah. The, like they got the, five, like a mini vacation in the, the middle Sixers of the season. The Sixers play Sunday and they don't play until Friday. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've seen uh, people were like, I was on the Spurs right there and they were happy as hell. They got this break or whatever because it's like, our guys look like they're trying to, like, they're getting banged up. They've been fighting or whatever, like, especially with Wemby. Mm-hmm. Wemby benefiting from the few days. Yeah, because oh. he hurt himself and yeah. then came in in the very first play is when Chris Paul got his assist. Hey, shout out to Chris Paul again, hey, man. AJ I DeBons is crazy. What do you do? So Stephen A says, so who do you play like? He said, I play like a mix of Tracy McGrady and Shay. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Damn, it sounds top twenty. You think you think Shea's gonna be like the Paul, like a Paul George type figure, like where for the next generation? Of, yeah, because a lot of the current players, young players, say Paul George is their guy. Do yeah. uh-huh. you think Shea could be that for this next yeah. generation of Hooper? You know what, Mari be saying? Yes dude, and yeah. no. Mari, I think Paul, he be Paul George to do that is so prototypical because it's six eight plays with the ball and then without Shea, six seven plays with and without, six, without the ball. Oh yeah, so. mid range guy. A little aura to him. Yeah. I would I, No, that game against the Pelicans the other night. I would I would tell my son I'm out of his game up to shape for sure. <laughs> yeah. For gotta get, sure. Get six six. For sure. Oh, uh, my son, he got a good chance. He got a good chance for sure. He got um, a good chance. The he, gig like, is- he like a uh, true religion. He got good genes. <laughs> game against the Pelicans. Shea awful was game. walking to the basket. Yeah, awful time game. Time and time again. And it was so fun. I was having a lot of fun watching it. Then J Dub come in splash a three. It was. It, it got to be cool. crazy as an NBA player to go against, of his caliber to go against a bad defense, where you just walk to the basket. And I listen to the. I like the Pelicans broadcast a lot, um, so I listen it's to them. It's crazy being a professional. What you mean? Even like us, like he he just said, there is nobody in the world, really, that can rock with him. No, oh, yeah. When you're a professional, it's like you're in the elite of the elite. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's kind of crazy to think about. Like you are. He's a like you said. It's crazy when he see a, a uh, wait, when he see a good defense, he can go off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like when you're a professional, that means you like man. Is, I, he, is he the MVP right now? Who? Shea. No, it's, no, uh, it's, it's ninth ooh. seed MVP. Huh? Ninth seed MVP. They might be the 15th seed if he want the. You know it's crazy. I, was I just feel like we're moving the goalpost. Giannis and the Kumpo is also. He that's also was like AC, right? We should move the goalpost. The uh, the theory of the because you have the one C or I you know at the Gian- top you Giannis automatically and, get it. You see, averaging us twenty nine, great efficiency. Giannis and Jokic have like different storylines tied to their MVP case. That's what I always in, like in a way. Mm-hmm. I like production. I like proof of 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 uh, value, and I like the storyline. Like Giannis team started off really bad. They started off really slow. He flipped the switch, and then he's kind of understand this. Jokic had a baby. His team was at the top of the conference. He had the baby. He missed a few games. They fell all the way to, down to like eighth or ninth. They were I'm the top of the standings. I'm man. also not against Shea. I'm also not against it. By the way, you said what, KB? When were they at the top of the conference? They were like top four when Jokic was playing. No, oh. I didn't know four was top. That might have been real early. I don't think he's too far off, and I don't know if it was four, but I know they were definitely more comfortable than they were now. Yeah, then they went on like a five game. I agree though. Four ain't at the top. Top is like one or two. Oh well, yes, but when you were the fourth seed. <laughs> Falling down a tenth in the West, pretty big falling. Not arguing that, just correcting the top. Yeah, I don't think the top four C's are considered the top. Yeah, when you just <laughs> added context <laughs> to saying top yeah, four. Yeah, he definitely did just add If I that. say we're the top team out West and you say, yeah, we have four, I'll be like, oh, we're not the top I team I said one of the top. One of the top. One or two. <laughs> Damn, they're even three at that It's point. semantics. It's semantics. But do you really understand matter. what I'm saying? That's why I push back on it. Just because yeah. I remember the first game of the season, they lost. So I was like, when was they at the top? Because they weren't they really been OKC this whole ride when you think about it. To be the top and then be at four, that's a big difference in my opinion. 
if your girlfriend said, man, you're on the top, you've always been at the top of my list, and you find that list and you fourth or fifth, <laughs> <laughs> you're going you're gonna to be like, oh, yeah, I was at the top. Right? Huh? No, answer me. <laughs> You just uh, go shake his head. Answer me. I'm gonna utilize my First Amendment. Why? Your First, first Amendment, Amendment rights. You you the First Amendment. <laughs> 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 right. Actually, I'm no. gonna use freedom of speech right, right now <laughs> and not say use. nothing. <laughs> but I think he meant that. You gotta remember. Just think of the Dave Chappelle skit. He said, "I'm gonna plead the fifth. It's the Fifth Amendment. The Fifth. Yeah. I don't even know what the First Amendment is. Is that he the just right said it. He just told you. Freedom of speech. Oh, so what's the plead the fifth? What's the fifth amendment? <laughs> the f- the f- <laughs> wait, what are y'all talking about? What are you talking about? Plead the fifth wait, means wait, I'm not no, going to answer no, the question. Wait, exactly. Right. That's oh, what you just- yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. My you bad. see how he's had a flip it on you? What are y'all talking about? <laughs> yeah, the highest Denver has been is for one, two, three, four, a five-day stretch. They were the four seed. Yeah, I know what the what fuck I'm talking about. What are the top team? No, you don't, brother. They definitely was. Tied That's why for you the didn't want to answer that question. Because when I flipped it back <laughs> on you, you would have felt like shit if you hypothetically there was a list and you were fourth. You wouldn't be like, "Oh, I am at the top." You'd have been like, "What the fuck is this?" Yeah, yeah, you the one of the top levels I ever had. I'm a foe. <laughs> you'd be like, "Damn!" <laughs> Insta- instantly, instantly, <laughs> BlueChew.com. <You're, laughs> I need a year subscription. Instantly, instantly, horny goat weed. Sign me up. <laughs> she only had five partners, though. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, man. All four of them were one-time things. <laughs> you still at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> hell no. Does anybody have any more teams left? No, that's it. It's all 30. Damn, okay. what the hell? You want us to make an expansion team? Well, you know, <laughs> you know, if we don't say that one team, they're going to get on our ass. Uh, cool. I agree with you, though. I'm, I'm going to double no, check. No, I want them to get on our ass. Make the make the video game. Who bigger. had Atlanta? Me. Actually, I did. I literally said he had more to give, and they were like, "No, I'm done." I, don't. I didn't even say that. We never even had that conversation. Oh, maybe I had it with myself because you don't yeah. listen. Mm-hmm. You're so worried about being. Yo, as being your own world. <laughs> you be in my world. Y- you almost left the Hawks out. That's crazy. Atlanta fans, look. I had Bogdan Bogdanovich. <laughs> They get, they left get two words. <laughs> left Bogdanovich. What the hell is he the X factor for? I feel like he's the missing. <laughs> they doing he's okay. The missing piece. He's the, they doing okay. But if he can get back to his last year version, this thing could be a very deadly team. Okay. I'm just making sure we who had Clippers. Did we do Clippers? I didn't. I didn't have Clip. I didn't have Clippers. You had Clippers, KB. I had Clippers. Yeah. yeah. Um. Oh, I had Clippers. Okay, I was going to say, <laughs> whew. All right, how did I get the I Yeah, I was looking at, yeah, you did. I you do did. have the Clippers. I see it in my notes. Um, Their X Factor is Kawhi Leonard. I'm going to do what he just said. <laughs> 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 They've been a good, solid team. If they get him, they could be deadly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been talking on the phone oh, with him. No. Yeah, he want to play so bad, he damn didn't tear. I've been talking on the phone with him, man. I got, I got him in my phone. It's clock, too. <laughs> no, real shit. Um, what would their X Factor be? Um, what would the Clippers X Factor be? I mean, how can you say anything outside of Kawhi Leonard's knees? I, yeah, yeah. I mean, everything else is fine. They're doing better than and they have nothing else to do but buy. Yeah. And I, I don't know. Unless they just want to be patient. With Wait, what? What gets them? You have to be that. Well, regardless. yeah, yeah. They have to do that. Regardless. Yeah. What did we talk about at the top of the show? Uh, we was talking about something that had nothing to do with basketball. Mike leaving a car, and then that went into some uh, other stuff. It was pretty – well, we were talking about Americans leaving. Well, we were talking about why do Americans <laughs> – why Americans so lazy or something like yeah. that. Yeah. What yeah. other lazy tactics you have, Mike? Are you a – bae, pass in the remote, and it's right there? Uh, yes, sometimes. You have to think about it. <laughs> but it's I think it's just both ways. Like if I'm on the couch or whatever and I like I'm super comfortable, or whatever, she'll do it for me and then vice versa. Like I'll get up and do some shit for That's her fair. if she's feeling good. I, get, get I hate that shit with a passion though. Me too. Why? I just because it's right there. Yeah. I've mm-hmm. never like I, I had this conversation with my wife all the time. When my alarm goes off, I get up. Yeah. I'm not a, I need five more minutes, ten more minutes type mm-hmm. of dude. I'm an actionary guy. So like even when I am super comfortable and I need to turn off a light. I just get my ass up and do it because that comfortability, I can, I can do that again. The so, the quicker you do it too, the more it's over with. Yeah, mm-hmm. I hate when I get comfortable and then 
that y'all significant ever be like, damn, I forgot this. Yeah. Yeah. I've had to go downstairs, uh, down two yeah. flights of stairs in order to get the thing that I forgot. Like what a water it? bottle in the basement. What and I needed it to that's, sleep. Like, I'll get in bed and she'll be like, oh, I forgot the candle wax thing on in the living room. And I'm like, my big thing. <laughs> what uh, the fuck? Is that, like, don't ha- <laughs> that don't happen because I get in bed last <laughs> and I always make sure the door's locked. I can't, I'm kind of kinda OCD. Usually with when that I get in bed, I'm coming from a thing. computer where my desk. So, mm-hmm. like, I go straight to the room. So, like, I, I don't go back in the living hey, room. Hey, man. Unless I had to, like, on some Big Brother shit, no, you need to check that house. You're the head of that house. You're the man the of that house. house. Already checked. And you need to make sure that them doors is locked. Make That's sure that slide door is locked. I checked the locked. doors multiple times. I checked the stove and the oven multiple times. I checked all the lights. It's like, because when I do get in bed, I never want in the back of my mind that I close the garage. So I check it multiple yeah. times just to double check. The alarm is on. The dogs are ravenous in case somebody do break in. Are y'all ready? Y'all ready? Get them hyped up a little bit. Are your dogs free? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, they old enough. What do you do to get him like hyped up? Oh, okay. Well, Jax is always ready. <laughs> That's how you need. Uh, they, Who's they most likely to, to attack a stranger, Jax or Cobra? Cobra. Cobra. I've seen I've seen Cobra get not get down, but look like he was gonna get down. For real. And I'm like, thank you, but not right now. <laughs> and we need that because he's the bigger dog. So yeah. like nobody, Jax is ten pounds. Him getting he got to chew on some ankles. Yeah. No, Cobra would get down on you. And I like that about him. I've never got that vibe from Cole. It's because he fuck with you. Mm. You know who he don't fuck with? The Ooh. groomer that come over to our house once For a real? month. Yes. Oh, well, he, Do does not mess he with doesn't her. like getting groomed. Yeah. I don't think anybody likes getting groomed. Mm. Remind me about <laughs> that uh, Hank Hill dog when they thought Hank Hill dog was rac- racist. I'm not locked in enough. Wow. <laughs> you remember I've, that I've episode? Yes. You know, why, you know why they thought it was racist, right? I forgot. Because uh, I think the black dude, right? It was like a black mailman or whatever. Or maybe it was a black gardener or something like that. I think he, yeah, yeah. Gardner. But the, the dog was getting mad because he knows Hank, who's like a real like house type person, like home improvement type person. He does the yard and everything like that. So once the dude was getting what close is the to the dog's yard, name? the dog has ma- a lady, ladybug, lady, 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 do- lady dog, right? Or lady, yeah, ladybug, 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 ladybug. Yeah, ladybug. But yeah, basically the dog was just being protective, but he was doing it against a black person, so they thought the dog was mm. racist. I'm I'm gonna still say he is. He was trying to prove the whole show that his dog wasn't racist. Literally, <laughs> Literally that's the an whole epic show. episode. Lady Bird. Lady Bird. Okay, yeah. What kind of dog is it? I Georgia no Bloodhound. Mm. Purebred. Mm. One of them Texas dogs. You sound like a Texas dog. You know we live in Arlington. I didn't know that. But Yo, can't get. We've been to Arlington. Hank Hill is actually. He's. I don't think we would rock with Hank Hill. Nah, he seems like he would be kind of conservative. He named Lady Bird after Lady Bird Johnson, a former first lady of the United States. <laughs> you know how deep into the... Her name was Lady Bird? That had to be a nickname, right? No, no that's, that's her, her name. name. Lady Bird Hill. Wow. I mean, but he's a very... Oh, you mean the actual lady? Yeah, yeah. L- it says Lady Bird Johnson. Wow. Little do- Hey, you- that's why we. Ne- I need to read more, and I have been trying to read more. It's so much I don't know. I just finished the Malcolm X book finally because I, I went I off finished the, the Alchemist yesterday too. <sighs> you know what I took away from the Alchemist? What? what? Almost nothing. Damn. That mean you ain't read right. No, because I mean the Did whole take? the Did whole idea of it is like live your life to the fullest. Uh, that was some shit I knew doing already. It. Yeah. I mean, I still enjoyed the story, mm-hmm. but it wasn't like groundbreaking for me. Like, what for type of books are y'all gonna bring to the book club? Like, I was thinking about that. Like, Mike, what is your I think we should definitely have a balance of fiction and nonfiction. I feel like Mike would give us a fiction book, a story. I like one of the best books I, like I historical read of fiction. all last year. It was like book of the year. It was a fiction book, but it was it had a story behind it. I love stories that involve crime. There you ah. go. That means that mean my type of book. That's the type of books y'all going to bring. I love like crime stuff. I don't know. Or like drugs. Are y'all going to bring <laughs> the same type of book every time? Because like mm-hmm. I don't I might bring a history book, might bring a business book. For the people at home, we can we are still working out the details. Hopefully by next episode we got more. No, I think we no, have an no, idea no, no. of Ain't what no the book is. We're going to nail yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, we will. Um we have an idea of what the first book would be. Yep. I'm actually gonna pick it up. I'll maybe give it ten give me ten pages to let y'all know whether or not it's good enough to keep as the first one. But um, No, you can't read it at all. We either uh, gonna have to conclude. To but that. we gonna we're gonna still read it. But 
But no, because I don't want to pick a book and then all four of us like, this shit ain't it. And then now we got a whole group of a thousand hey, people I'm reading saying, a book that nobody When we like. do the book club, that's a that's part, part of, of it, it that might, might can happen. Because how else would we know? Somebody would have to read the book first. How do we determine, are we just picking the books or are the people also in the group? I think we'll start, probably we, start off with us four and then, then take suggestions throughout the course of it. It's, we we, still vote, we have a voting system on that yes, shit. Yes. Okay. Maybe we vote on the genre of book that we try to pick. But we got some really good feedback on that, though. Yes, from yeah, the a lot of people in the comment section. Twitter. Yeah. Um, people are saying I ain't read a book in five years, but What's I'm the down. name of the book? Oh, never mind. I don't want to see. Text, I'll show text, you. I'll show text, you. Yeah. Now, I don't want to see people getting in this book club, and all of a sudden, we we load up the Zoom meeting and say, man, I ain't get to chapter three. You know, I get kicked right <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I ain't get, I ain't get to sure. chapter five. I know we're supposed to have it done by last oh, week. Oh, for sure. But you, see, you know, it's kind of like planning a trip. I mean, we're going to Miami in three months. Everybody, but then it's like three weeks. Man, bro, <laughs> the job wouldn't let me get off the. Di- oh, yeah, man. But yeah, um, anything else? Oh, I watched yesterday. I watched a quarter of um, Bengals versus Cowboys, mm-hmm. but I watched the Simpsons broadcast, and it was the stupidest and most fun thing I've done in a long. Is that why time. I keep seeing that damn clip of Mo on the field? Yeah, run, Mo's running. a linebacker. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mo I seen the one. The he was. Uh, he was. He was like when I. When I put a, a parlay on Mo, and he was a receiver, he was going crazy. Ralph Ralph Wiggum called a touchdown in the flats. Ralphie? Yes. Bro. Oh man. <laughs> they had Lisa running a touchdown for who's that? Chase Brown. Yeah. Chase back. Brown. It was it was so stupid. But Mina Kimes was on the call, and Mina Kimes is as much of a Simpsons fan as I am, so she's making references on random shit. In the, it wasn't too bad. So when the when the NBA do the two K shit, it might be decent. I don't know. Isn't that this week though? Green release. Isn't it this week? I'm not sure. I thought it was for the NC or the NBA Cup, which starts tomorrow. I guess the semis of that start tomorrow. Bill Belichick got an offer to be a coach for North Carolina, I believe. Oh, not even NFL team. Yeah. Uh, Yes, starts tonight. Yeah, starts tonight. The semifinals of the Cup start tonight. A quick, quick predictions. Just tell me who y'all think win these Cup games. Uh, First one, if my phone has stopped messing up today, Magic versus Bucks in Milwaukee. I would take the Bucks. Uh, I'll go Bucks. Bucks, Bucks. are seven and, and a half point favorite right now. With the injuries too, that yeah. just sucks. No yeah, Paolo, no Franz. I kind of hate that this is the game because yeah, the TV wise, it might not. Yeah, even at least be we want Franz. Yeah. Next game is OKC versus Dallas. Oh, that's a that's one of that's them the ones. Right? That's one of them ones. Yeah, it's one of them ones. <laughs> I'm gonna go Dallas. They've been rolling. They played each other in the playoffs, right? Yes, they did. Give me Washington. Dallas. Give me Dallas. Give me OKC. We'll yeah. split it. Um, Knicks versus Hawks is the first game tomorrow. This could be. This is another one in New York. Give me the Knicks. I got go, the Hawks. I'm going Hawks. I was Trey going Hawks guard? too. Give me the Knicks. I'll split it. It's so going to be Knicks. quietest in there. And then lastly, going to be loud. I don't know where it is. Let's put the wager on. <laughs> he said what? Let's put the wager on. Well, he said be loud if it's he said that it's a Madison Square Garden. Oh, then it's going to be quiet as hell in Madison Square Garden. Then put some money on it. No. <laughs> you be so confident until it's time to put some money on it. Don't talk shit then. Last week, you exempt from talking shit. We cast, but don't <laughs> right. put no money on it. Rockets Bro- versus broke Warriors. Broke ass meals. <laughs> Rockets Warriors is the last game. Uh, I'm taking Rockets. It. Okay, you better have pick my team. <laughs> I'm taking the Rockets too. You better have pick my team. It's in Houston. They got the uh, Warriors beat them last time, didn't they? Well, I don't, it wasn't no like in season, but they played uh, not too long ago, didn't remember. they? Pretty sure they did. Tyloo so might have not been lying, Mike. He need them. He looks sad. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Kawhi. Kawhi. Oh. That's all we got NBA wise, man. Kawhi just want to be on that court, man. What's new for y'all? Not a goddamn thing. I've been playing, been playing a lot of Rivals 2K. a bunch. I'm downloading today. You've been man. playing a lot of 2K. Yeah, I'm not, I'm done though. I'm downloading today. You done playing a lot of 2K. Did you get your plus five? No. How I'm far? Six percent away, man. You cannot I stop. Play, I played a game and got six, not six percent, six tenths of a percent. So that means that I need to play what twelve games? Of is that math right? Is that math math? I don't know. No, something to get six percent. Like, he don't have to play twelve games. No, I need no. six. Yeah, because I'm getting so like point five per game. Okay. And I have six games, so I need like twelve games played. No, because there has to be a way you can get more than point five. That's what I got a last plus? game. I had an A. Yeah, six percent. Hey, this is what I'll say about them cap breakers. It's tough. Dumb twelve games is worth it. Like I, for the I just think organically I'm obviously going to get there because we're going to yeah. play at least a couple times a week. No, but I want you to get there as soon as possible. Then it's hey, like, bro. It's going to make it open Get on up. my account, bro. Just play a couple games in my account. Might as well, shit. 
I got you. You know I got good bills. They all sent us, but you know I got good bills. I got you because I, I was going through my bills yesterday. I'm like, I don't be knowing what to pick. So yeah. having a couple more bills, go, I go, might go as well. Go take Arkansas to the park or something, man. I don't be knowing what to pick either, but that Kobe, that, man. Hey, I, I, just I like want you. Kobe I want people to know. Thank you, bro. For all them people that be having 83s, 70-some threes and be missing, y'all got to get y'all game up. I, I had a bill with a 43-point. I'm hitting 43? lightly contested. Who was 43? Huh? The power bill? No, I, it's this one on one build I got. And he's like, James. Well, you don't even bring him to the pro am or nothing. He he can't play pro. I know, that's what I'm saying. So but how, I just, how much good is his shooting if he can't even play on the pro am court? Because that's what it's going to be. I don't think a, he could. I don't think it would be due to his shooting. I think it's due to his passing. He can't uh, pass. Oh, okay. He has like a 50 some pass. That's why I say he's like literally damn near for ones for like, especially when it be double XP, it'd be easy to run it up on there. But. I was hitting 40, 40 uh, rating threes with the, with the lightly shooter. contested, rhythm with the shooter. rhythm shooter, yeah. yeah. You say go download marbles, though? Yeah, I am. I, I After I've played yeah. it for now, like two hours, it ain't even a lot. I don't think you're going to like it. We'll I don't see. think it's a Mike type of game. We're going to load it, though. We're going we gonna to play it, but I don't think it's your type of game. I'll download it, too. Oh, shit. Hey, be for real with me, y'all. If that invite came, y'all ain't going to the Bob House. <laughs> I would go I to would the go. Bob House. That's that content. I got mad at somebody yesterday. Somebody said D Mail's doing a full review that bro, that would go so crazy. Where is it at? It's probably in Miami somewhere. Or oh, Cali. Cali. Oh, okay. Somebody came into my uh, stream and they was like, Mike, you going to the Bop House? And like, I don't know why, but that it just irritates. I didn't I didn't see your tweet. Uh, I didn't know what the hell the context was. I'm like, why the y'all keep coming? Oh, you heated up on him? Huh? You 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 was talking shit to him? Cause you yeah, I was know? like, why the I was like, why the hell y'all keep asking me these dumbass questions? I was like, <laughs> I know you probably giggling behind your screen too, thinking that shit is funny as hell. And it's like, it's just this piece tweet or whatever. And I was like, oh, I ain't see it yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um What's so funny? <laughs> because I, I you got to see how I react to when uh, he asked me. You got to see that tweet about them saying how you going to look in there. Yeah, yeah I did see from that. from my yes. wife and kids. Yeah. Bro, that, that had me in tears, bro. That fit with these? And you did say you want to buy that fit. Yeah. yeah. You can. I bet you you can put it together real quick. I would just, I'll wear it just on the show. Wow. Y'all Christmas shop? How y'all Christmas shopping going? I'm done. You done? Oh, I'm so envious. I got to get going. That's why I told KB I was going to. We was going to essentially be at the mall together. Yeah. Yeah, we're going together. Same car and everything. Bro, people are getting paid on Fortnite. <laughs> yeah. They had that settlement check hidden. Somebody, I just seen this dude got 1200 Somebody in the Discord, Max, who was in, he got he got paid a couple hundred dollars off that settlement. For what? I don't know. A couple years ago, I guess, they uh, Epic and the FTC had a settlement. So they sending out the checks now. For what, though? Usually it's like uh, breaching like security or something like that. Uh. Or like. Something like that with um, cause you know they that's, had all them that's in-game right. transactions that's, and shit like that's that. Eleven new bills. <laughs> <laughs> Unlawful billing, billing is what they said. I don't know what that means. What be, LeBron I, say? I don't know what that means. I'll be like, that ain't enough money. Personal information. Bro, I be scared when I see that settlement shit. It'd be like, Snapchat. If you use Snapchat in 2016, you fill this out. You'll get your settlement. I'm like, bro, that should be looking so risky. I'm not putting my information in that right, shit. Right, to get $900. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's about all. For I think me, even man. Cash App had one. I think Cash App, it was a bunch of companies that had that breach. They hope, they pro- as real as that is, there a lot of them are probably hoping we have the mindset of like it's too good to be true. Because then they're like, ah, <laughs> yeah, oh uh, yeah, gotta, that's definitely how some people be. We ain't gotta pay no money. I think Facebook had one. Um, trying to go, I didn't sign up for them. I just know about them. I can't remember anybody else who did. I'm gonna yeah. before we end the episode, I'm gonna open up Facebook and see if I have a good memory. And if not, then we end the show. Can and we all do, do that? All right, sure, yeah. In every episode, we'll see if we have Facebook memories. I'm going to have a memory. It's just that, will it be appropriate to share? Um, it says, I do have a memory. December 12th, 2012. It's a picture of Bart, Millhouse, Nelson, and, and then me and, and my, me and my hey, trying to get it, you why, bitch. Oh, yeah, I did just see that. That's it. That's I why I don't be going on Facebook. On bro. December 10th, 2016, the Bulls with Dwayne Wade in the jersey, they beat. The Miami Heat, 105 to 100. No, 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 no. Came Go. up, baby. 
go go down to the last. Don't don't tell me on the recent. Go down to that gritty, the nitty gritty. That's of all I got. Uh, I really wasn't posting like that. I guess in two thousand and nine, December tenth, fifteen. No, years no, no, ago. no. This is what we got to go back to your Snapchat because it give you the exact date too. I probably ain't got a Snapchat. Memory this is my Snapchat. I was. This one when I had my little dreads. But it switched. I can't even see no more. Um, also, a year ago, Sam Decker put Ennis Cantor on a nasty poster. Yeah, a year oh, you got NBA memories. Oh, no, That's it was lit. 2016. I'm going to say a year ago. December 9th. 2009, December 10th, I said, so much on my chest. Man, man, man. <laughs> Damn, he was going it. through it. <laughs> then I said, back on the road to redemption. We 4-1. Yeah. Hornet boys. Gotta be, gotta beat Proviso East tomorrow. Did, did y'all beat did them? Did they win? The world would never know. Uh, I think we did. We 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 went to the um conference championship that year. That's one of my favorite ones. We have basketball related Facebook posts about us playing. I say uh things we can do in twenty minutes, girl. Ain't that the Drake <laughs> Drake and Rihanna song? Yeah. I am me. I am me. Thought you knew about that the team. That was decent hey. though. That's from 13 years ago. Hell no. <laughs> Quoting Drake. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to leave it a like. We appreciate everybody that's been showing support. And we will see y'all on Saturday. Peace.